Never. No. Hey, actually, I want to ask you something. It's funny. Um, so I told you I was looking at your podcast. Just, you mm-hmm. know, see what I was getting into. Mm-hmm. And I clicked on one with you. And you're talking about how, speaking of grocery stores, you really had to shit. <laughs> that was the most recent one of the most. So recent let me ones, yeah. let me hear about that. I didn't I didn't watch the rest of it. So <laughs> what happened with the rest of that story? Yeah, well, long story short, I mean, I, it was more of like a hypothetical, really, because I was I was just racing down North Scottsdale, uh, trying to make it back home because I just <laughs> ingested a uh, Starbucks cold brew. The cold That'll brew do it to you, bro. Every and time. Uh, on an empty stomach, mind you. So like I'm I'm weaving through traffic. Meanwhile, my registration's like three months expired, and I'm just riding dirty trying to get home Getting before home. I shit my yep. pants. And I thought to myself, I'm like, cops must pull over people who have to shit all the time. Yeah, actually, after you po- after I, I reposted the post and uh, had a bunch of cops hit me. Me too. I had a lot of cops. A bunch of my- cops hit me. Were like, <laughs> oh, they gave you stories. Yeah, bro, happens all the fucking time. You know, like, and yeah, I, I, like- I wrote one of them back. I was like, how often do you let him go? He's like, it's literally case by case. If I believe, <laughs> if I believe the dude or not. Pretty Good much. person, I'll let you go. If not, <laughs> yeah, get, you know. Wear it, bro. I feel like cop. that's such a difficult job. I know they get a lot of shit, but just mm. like. The feel you have to have. Bro, I couldn't do it. Situ- I couldn't either. I couldn't do it. Like, I really dude, couldn't. I the couldn't. amount of people that you run into that are like, they might not be having a good day and you're not having a good day and they're just catching attitude the with The human somebody, element you know? of it is very crazy. It's a crazy thing. And you always got to play good guy. Always. You know? Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of, I mean, there's, we, could have, we could talk for hours about that. There's a hours, lot of moving bro. parts to it on both sides. I know people are strongly opinionated about it for, for real reasons. Yep. You know? There's definitely some weird fucking... There's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of, like, in general, I just feel like character issues nowadays, like, and I feel like there's actually a shift happening towards mindfulness because it's out of necessity. Almost like if we didn't, you know, if this young, I feel like this younger generation, like, met things like meditation. Think about when we were growing up, or I, I'm older than you. Yeah. When I was growing up, I didn't hear one fucking peep about meditation. No, nah, it was go hard, I didn't hard, know that man. existed. You know what I mean? No like, chance. So, you know, obviously with the pros and the cons of the internet, one of those is just like the visibility to the rest of the world. You know, like where where you grew you grew up in California, Southern right? Southern California, yeah, Marietta. Yeah, Marietta. And where I grew up, I mean I didn't Pawtucket, have, right? Right outside Pawtucket? Yeah. Yeah. What was the did town you, called? Did you play there? Oh yeah, I played, you in played against the Paw Sox. All oh time. yeah, man. So you spent a decent amount of time in AAA, right? I, I yeah. So I was I debuted in 2017. I got sent down for like 10, 10 days then. Yeah. Um, and then I was up for the rest of the year. 18, I was up and down. Um, 19, I spent the majority of the year in the big leagues, mm-hmm. and then I haven't been down since. But and I played. I, in, I feel like I was always in Pawtucket. Yeah. Like for some weird reason, whenever I got sent down or whatever trip we went on, I made my way to Pawtucket, man. Did but you? It, uh, I enjoyed it. Like I literally, I could walk out of my high school and if you know had a good arm, which I did at the time. Oh yeah, oh yeah, you slang that. I thing. could fucking throw it almost hit McCoy from my my high school. That's oh, how really? close it was. Does it look the exact same? We like, shot a, we shot a music video. We there. did. My most popular music video ever, the one with Marcus Stroman. Marcus oh, that's Marcus right. is dancing around. Yeah, in that's it. right. And then I actually shot so I actually shot that on on the uh what song was that by the way? These days. These days. Which is a that's my biggest record by far. It's a platinum song. Great song. It's the only platinum song I have as an independent artist. So it's like this video was like one of, I've never really talked about it, I don't think, or at least on the podcast, but the concept basically was like, Marcus always wanted to be a rapper, like growing up. I always wanted to be a professional baseball player. Yeah. And then like, as we were both kind of at the same level, like I felt, I got hurt and then I like went on to live his dream, his childhood roles dream. Reversed. And the roles were reversed. So he's act, he's rapping like me in the camera. He's living my life. He's in my house oh, with my boys. Think, yeah. He's the rapper. And then, I'm the dude on the baseball field. That's dope, bro. And it's kind of like that dynamic between y'all is such a cool, um, unique it friendship really is. because, like, both of y'all have reached like the pinnacle. You know what I mean? Like, both of y'all are both doing your thing. And I feel like you being an athlete and bringing that athlete mindset into the music industry, yeah. I think that's a very unique skill set that you have, bro. Not very many people have that feel for. Right. In terms of like, it's interesting how it's evolved. You're exactly right, though. I can't, I really, like, there's a certain diligence and like, just competitiveness that like, yeah, I didn't bro. even know what I was doing musically. I had no idea. Yeah. Like even to this day, like I'm still not musically trained. You know what I mean? I'm just going, I just have music in my head. It's weird. And so like, I have a question for you to like, do you think you like music so much? Because I feel like baseball is like similar in terms of like, you're never perfect and you're never ever oh, yeah. gonna figure it it's out. Never so it's like done. a constant, you're constantly never striving done. in the competition. And you're yeah. just like, all right, 
I've gotten here. Now, what do I have to do next? That's a really good point. Never really thought about that. It's never done. Like maybe like that's like your vice, bro. Like that feeling that 100%. you're constantly chasing something and that chasing 100%. that perfection. You're exactly right. Wow, I'm actually like I've never really thought about yeah, that. But yeah, you're never. It's crazy, right? Yeah, and our 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 whole you know theme, like our biggest branding, is keep going. So it's kind of yep. like hinting at the fact that it never stops. You know, you never stop. There's never an arrival. A lot of my like, if you really think back to a lot of, I don't know how long you if you even listen to like the older Mike stud, but course, closer bro. that concept was. That was exactly what Closer was. The video, I'm running the whole time. I get up to the top of the mountain. I look out. It's a crazy view. And then I turn and I realize there's a whole fucking another. I wasn't at the peak, you know? And the concept is like you're always closer. You never arrived. You're just like always stepping one, you know, mm -hmm. one foot in front of the other type vibe. Absolutely. Bro. So bro, it's crazy. Go ahead. Go, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Dude, I was going to say like kind of like on the flip side of that, some of the best advice I've gotten and it's not even like a baseball thing, it's more of like a mental mi uh, mind thing, is uh, mm -hmm. I feel like as a competitor, we never, like we have our end goal, right? And mm -hmm. we never celebrate those little victories to get to that. Absolutely. You know and, what I mean? Like, oh, dude, that's something we talk about a lot on this. We, like just the idea of being present and like uh, even things like just general gratitude. Like I didn't even know what the concept of being grateful was. Like yeah. I was always, you know, thankful for my parent, but the idea of like that, you know, every day when I wake up, I write down, like, things I'm thankful for every day. I have a gratitude journal just for that. You know, like, my, this says gratitude. I'm, it changed my life because I wasn't, like, nothing was good enough. Yeah. Like, no, I was getting though. wins. I was just, like, I was, like, what? Like, I literally have, I remember having a conversation with my sister, and I was just, like, I don't know why, but it doesn't really, like, move me the way I felt like it should when, like, someone's, like, yo, you saved my life. Mm -hmm. You know, like, literally to my face, like, I would, I would, but it got so, not th this, and this might sound like I'm being an asshole, but it's really just the truth, and it's like, it's not from a place of, it's not from a place of that at all. It's really like, I don't know why, but I couldn't, I felt like I should be appreciating all of those things way more. Mm -hmm. I, it didn't take anything away from that interaction with that person. I was there with them, and I was moved by it, but like, just, just like, our next, like, meet and greets, literally, like, I'd have five people in one meeting. It's not present in the moment. And I'd be, right? yo, I'd come back from the meeting and be like, because that's heavy. That's fucking a drained. You know what I mean? Like emotion. And I just didn't have a, like a real awareness or like sense of like really being there in the moment, like really embracing the positives of it. You know, Absolutely, I was kind of just like, bro. what's next? You know? And, I, and even in my life, I felt that like I, I had some dark times in LA. Like I had this great crib. You know, if you saw how we grew up, like, You'd be like, bro, look at this. You did it. Like, yeah, you did it. Exactly. And then, like, I knew that. So I had, like, this shame because I wasn't feeling like that. So I was just like, am I really just never going to be What's missing? fulfilled? You yeah. Know? And a lot of it, bro, a lot of it was a, was a shift to spirituality. And, like, you know, some of it was related for me for psychedelics, for sure. But, like, even just the idea of, like, you know, waking up and writing down the things you're thankful for every day i think there's something to writing things out oh right? there is like rather than typing it or thinking it or even saying it bro but just yeah. getting out i think you, like that's manifesting yeah bro, like, and and to our point earlier like when i was growing up this shit i'd be like what the fuck are they talking about if i heard this right now you know but with where things have gone and the visibility of these things and you could see there's actually like this next generation is like we want love you know like we want to Let's, you know, like, let's tap We're in. We're in this together, Let's man. enjoy this. Yeah. Like, fuck, our time may be limited. The fucking, you know, like, there's just so many factors, and it feels crazy. Like, time, you know. I it's think evolving, it, bro. I think it actualized that, like, mortality of us. You know, like, when you're a kid, you're like, We're getting old, that's so, you're getting old, bro. Life. <laughs> yeah. yeah that ass, you know. The, the mortality of just, like, even just the society, though. Like, you know, like, something like COVID happens, just like, oh, everything changes immediately. You know what I mean? I think that changed a lot of people's outlook. Absolutely. Honestly. Absolutely. And I think you could argue, in my head, the way I see things, like I would argue that it was, it was exactly what we, what we needed. You know, something happened. There's obviously terrible yeah. things that come along with it. But nature is nature, bro. Like, you know, know like what I mean? We just got hit in the face. Like, what are we going to do about yeah. it type deal? Yeah. Speaking of COVID, we're both, we got something in common right here. We're both survivors. <laughs> Patient number zero, bro. Yeah. So can't we're, smell nothing. We're can't. talking in the kitchen. You got to you gotta walk us through this a little bit. So basically, I had COVID in January of 2020. And, uh, you know, well, I'll, I'll give you the whole rundown. Basically, we had a little like, I don't even want to say this, but a little get together at the yeah. house and having some wine, you know, mm -hmm. having a good time. Absolutely. And I remember we pop open one of my favorite bottles. 
And uh, I was like, this tastes shitty. I was like, what the fuck? What the fuck is this? You know? I was like, oh, I can't smell or taste anything. Go down the street, get a mm. rapid test. Got COVID. So I'm in my room, and uh, so I'm, I'm there for 10 days. Didn't get sick. Just lost my taste and smell. But here we are 10 months later, and I can't smell or taste nothing. For starters, your parties and, or get-togethers sound a lot different than ours. <laughs> You're like, well, we cracked open my favorite Bordeaux. And then, uh, I couldn't I'm like, smell where's it. where's the fucking Chuck <laughs> Where's the girl? Uh, Mike's like, I had my 37th Bud Light, and I just couldn't taste it anymore. Oh, that's hilarious. Uh, bro. Man. <laughs> am, I, am I fucked up, or am I really not tasting this right now? You know yeah, what I mean? For real, what's happening? <laughs> no, yeah. but that's, it's crazy, bro. That's, that's wild for me. Not yeah, being so a- I lost my smell, and, you know... I remember being like, I actually like thought about it and I was like, thank God it's not my taste. You know, like, you know, that's all I got. I love, that's like, that's what you live for, man. Exactly. Eating food. Yeah, exactly. And just like, I feel like that's one of the, that's one of those things that like is kind of universal amongst all humans. How many things are universal amongst all humans? We love to eat. Yeah. You know, like that's an, that's an enjoyable, that's one of the highest frequency times, like as being a human being, like when you're consuming something, giving yourself nutrients. But also enjoying your, it. Your senses are like, this is amazing, you know? That's why that that feeling when you go to dinner is just like, ah. You know, like I'm happy as hell right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's nuts, dude. It's I have crazy. to like trick myself sometimes, like, if I'm eating pizza, I'm like, I think I know what pizza tastes, but the fucked up part is, bro, like I forget what I don't remember what stuff tastes like. That's insane. But I can That's feel insane. I can feel hot stuff, like spice, I can I can taste. So like I That's just crazy. put hot sauce on everything. Shout out Cholula. Chula, you wanna send me some shit, please. Yeah. <laughs> For real. I so you can, you, can catch, you can catch the temperature that it's giving Oh, yeah, but stuff. I'll start sweating, bro. I don't know if maybe, like, that sense, because what happens if you lose a sense, the other ones get heightened. Yeah. Maybe, like, my sense of spice just fucking through the yeah. roof, bro. Because I'm telling you, man, like, even Cholula, I'm like, yo, like, some jalapenos in here? Like, what the fuck's going on? Crazy. But, yeah. Crazy. Weird, man. I'm hoping it comes back. I'm smelling my essential oils. But. So, all season... So you went through the whole season. You were you were saying you lost like a bunch of weight because like the yeah, joy of eating like it was, it was just tough to eat, man. Like it's a like, crazy thing. I'm eating the same thing every day. If I'm having a piece of steak, it tastes the same thing. If I'm having pasta, or if I'm eating a chocolate cake, that it, you know it's just texture at this point. Yeah. So I was just tough for me to eat, bro. Wow, it's so, crazy. It's but crazy. It's just something I gotta live with. I guess I don't know. Yeah. Someone help. At least to this point. You yeah. Know what I mean, who knows? But it's weird, bro. Like sometimes, like. I'll light a candle, whatever it may be. Um, You'll catch a little. A little bit. I'm like, oh, is it coming back? And then nothing, I think that's bro. happened to me a few times with smell. But I wonder if it's more like mind games, like your mind's playing with you, you know? Who knows? Who knows? It's a fucking weird, it's a weird time. Like, that was a, that was a crazy, that was a crazy thing. Hey, a crazy don't... set of, like, at, like, attributes that came with that. Like, losing your sense, your senses. Like, you have five senses, right? Or how many? Seven? What am I, am I don't I, know. I'm the wrong person to ask. You have, High school diploma, you have five bro. senses because of the movie The Sixth Sense. They could see dead people. Yeah, that was exactly. the sixth sense. There you go. There you go. There you so go. That's there how you. I remember. That's, <laughs> I literally was like, is this seven senses? <laughs> is it eight? I don't know. Nine? I don't well, where know. are we? Dead <laughs> <laughs> so we're in, actually, let's answer that. We're in fucking Scottsdale, Scottsdale, Arizona. Love this place, man. You're really one of our, you're our first guest back, right, Kilmer? We haven't had a guest in a while. We oh, haven't had man. a guest since uh, Will Compton and Matt. May. In Nashville. I don't know Nashville. if I like being the first baseball player. You know, that means we didn't go. You know what I mean? Yeah, but no, no. We're gonna we're gonna go for it. We uh it's we're in like base like it's it feel like I'm just like in baseball, baseball. USA. USA. <laughs> yeah, bro. What was the fucking place down in Atlanta where everyone played? Marietta, East, Georgia, dude. East, yeah, Marietta and then East Cobb. East Cobb. It feels thing, like yeah. that. It feels like East Cobb. Go for, to the grocery store. East Cobb for adults. <laughs> yeah, right. It's nuts how many baseball players. I, I should just say athletes in general, dude, are out here. But I love that. I love that vibe, bro. Yeah. It's really, it, it is really cool, and it's kind of cool for me because it feels very, like, full circle. Like, I kind of thought I was going to be in this wave. Yeah. Probably would be in these places doing this yeah. shit. Kinda. I thought I would never be here, though. Like, I've always thought, and I always say this to people because they're like, why don't you live in Tampa? Like, spring training is there. You spend a lot of your time. And right. I'm like, for me, I need, like, a mental Tampa. break. When the, when the, who? Tampa. Oh, Tampa. 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 <laughs> that place, bro. Yeah. Uh, but, like, I just need, like, a mental break. You know, I feel like yeah. whenever I'm in Tampa, your mind goes to work mode. But like I always felt that way about Scottsdale. Just really, there's so many baseball players around. I did the fall league for a little bit. Yep, yep. But I don't know, living out here actually, dude. It's, it's fire. Like paradise, dude. It's fire. So you're not an owner here, but you're, I, you want to be. I want to be. It really is. We were just talking about it. Like, I mean, for for fucking November, like, 
<laughs> Dog, it's 87 the degrees. Insane. Outside. It's a joke. It's actually comical. It's, I actually looked like a dumbass today in the gym. So I walked. It's kind of cold <laughs> in the mornings, though. It's chilly. It's yeah, chilly in the morning. It has morning. that a little bit in so the morning. So, you know, I woke up. I went outside. had some coffee or whatever. And I was like, damn, it's kind of it's cold out here. So I put a beanie on. Yep. Thinking, you know, my car's in the garage. Thinking it's going to be the same at the gym at 9.30 in the morning, you know. Mm -hmm. The bitch was 87 degrees, bro. So here I am with a beanie on. Crazy. Dude, I look like an idiot. It's, uh, it is night. like, man, I, I don't know. We've I told you we've been nomadic since the album, like, would say even before the album came out, right? So I was basically worked on the album while we were traveling, you, going you, all these oh, places. Oh, okay. The first place when we left LA, it really was like during COVID. It was just so crazy out there. And there was a lot going on. So, and I would say we've been in LA a bit too long. You know what I mean? It was I, I feel like that, about dude. Seven that's years. a dude. It's so it's there's so many just distractions around, man. Like it's, you feel like you can never get away. It's like, hey, I need to like distance my. I need to get some shit done today or this week or this month or whatever right. it may be. But it's always like, hey, we're at so and so tonight. Like, mm -hmm. hey, you should come by for a dinner or whatever it may be. It's like and it's wow. always it's think about how many people frequent like you know amongst athletes and entertainers. Like so the networking it really is a real thing, and you're like it's very easy for your psyche to tell yourself. Like, oh, I'm networking. I got to be out. Mm -hmm. I got to be out five nights a week. Like, or, yeah, and then all of a sudden you're be. out five nights a week and you're not really feeling the way you're supposed to be. You yeah. Know what I mean? And I don't know. I, I don't, you've been here for how long? Where? In Scottsdale? Yeah. So this is our second, this is our second stint here for both, both were two months, right? Mm -hmm. Roughly. Yep. Yeah. Correct. There hasn't been a day. So I've been here about a, a month where I've been stressed. I know it's a good. It's, it's, a good it's vibe. wild, man. Because there's I, a crazy little vibe in the air, man. It really is. It's like it's the nature. People driving slow. I don't know. I don't know if that's all the speed traps and stuff going on, but everyone's driving the speed limit. No one's in a rush. You yeah. Know? I don't know. There's something about it out where here. Where I'm man. from, uh, where we're from, like, it's incredible how how it really like when I go back, everyone's in a rush. Like no one's. You know, I, that's just how I feel, at least from my perspective. You know, like thousand percent, dude. It's it's just like that New England like hustle and bustle. It's the East it's Coast. It's fucking vibe, cold bro. outside. <laughs> run to the car. You know, like <laughs> everyone's in their own little world and they just got to do whatever the fuck they got to do, dude. Yeah. Like I feel like I got to tell myself to slow down when I come back home after the season because in New York, bro, it's like go 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 go. Yeah. I got to leave at so and so time to get there. The traffic. There's no rules there, so I have my car. I'm bobbing and weaving if I'm gonna be late. You know what so I are mean? You Walk us through a morning getting to the getting to the stadium. Ooh, man, I'm waking up. So I lived on I lived in House Kitchen this year, which has only took yeah. me 15, 20 minutes, which was great. Right on the west side, um, just wake up, go to my my little garage downstairs in my apartment building, get my car. And for me, bro, like it was literally I made a left turn. I'm on the highway. So like oh, that's for, cool. it made dude because usually I live kind of like deeper in the city. That takes like the fuckery out of it, or at least a decent. Well, no, amount that's of it. the whole difficulty about getting to the stadiums. Like if you live in the city, like mm -hmm. you got to go through all the one ways and all the you know fighting mm -hmm. the stoplights and all and that. And who shit. knows which and who knows where it's fucked up. You have Crazy no idea. Ways has no idea. You know you know so just hopping on that highway and just going ten X's 10, 10 minutes down the road. Not bad. Oh, it's unbelievable, bro. So compare that to the seasons prior where you were in different living scenarios. Mm, well, if we talk about... if Because you were up and down the year that, before, right? Yeah, well, I've always had an apartment because I've always broke with the team. So, like, I'm like, okay, I'm there. And then, like, someone comes back if right. they're healthy. Um, so I'm like, I have to, like, move out myself from my apartment. And then I'm in my car. Um, but... It's crazy. People before I got, don't think about that. that nah, aspect bro. Of like, but like before, I was actually telling my dad, my mom this the other night. Um, I was over at our house, but um, like I appreciate the shitty places I've lived in throughout mm -hmm. the minor leagues, like Trenton, New Jersey, dude. Like I'll never forget <laughs> there was people selling and swinging dope right above me. Never forget that, dude. Wow. And it was like the most get. Like no one should be living there. Wow. Let alone athletes. You know what I mean? Like, wow. you know how like guys when they're big draft picks, they get their nice cars, mm -hmm. park in these cars, and these some of these places I've lived in, or just like get home at five in the morning, four in the morning. Dude, there's just people everywhere. Wow, it's crazy. It's nuts, dude. The I remember. I remember a guy got about. shot in our parking lot when we left on a road trip in Trenton because the prison, Trenton, New Jersey, that prison is right across the street from the stadium. You're lucky you made it out of there alive. Bro, the streets raise me. And <laughs> You're me, grateful yeah, to be alive. Yeah, grateful. Thank you. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, no, I mean, I think, I think um, what's cool about like the discussions I feel like we've been having, and I think what's cool about this podcast era is that like, you know, fans and the access and the understanding of y'all as humans is like really going up fast. You know what I mean? Because we have, Social you know, media. obviously baseball is always pretty buttoned up. You know, like media yeah. and like just like the idea of like. You're, 
you can understand like these scenarios as a fan, like a Yankees fan, they probably like, would never envision you like literally living where, you know, it wasn't safe to live. And being on, you know, being, they just think we're spoiled. Being in a you know major league baseball player and on on a track to the big leagues, it's crazy. It's wild, to think man. About. But I but I guarantee you, if you if you interviewed a hundred big league guys, they would all say the same things. Like I, I appreciated the Marlins. Yeah, bro. I mean, dude, I think anyone. It's a big it's a big part of what we try to talk about on this. Just like back to what my issue was with myself. Just like you gotta if if you're like. If you're having a bad time, but you understand like the bad times, like you have that knowing now. So when a bad time comes up, you're like, well, you know, this is part of it. I'm ready to grow from this. Like hey. you have that, you have that awareness. And I feel like until you have that, it's hard for people to be happy. You know hey, what it's mean? so funny you say that. So like when you get to the big leagues, you're like, I'm never gonna go down again. But you realize it's a business and you're like, Facts. okay, there's moves, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta. You just you, that's it sucks, bro. Like going back, you get a taste of the big, especially being in New York, bro. Right, like everything's right. the best. So, um, but I never, I got, I got fucked up for a little bit. Cause like, I was like, man, why is this happening to me? Like I should be in the big leagues. I want to be in the big leagues. Those are my boys. Really you know what I mean? And, um, I had two really bad years and I was like, why? You know what I mean? And I feel like sitting here today, I was like, if I didn't have those bad years and I understand them from the last two years. I wouldn't be where I'm at. Wow. You know what I mean? But like that, but like, kind of like what you're just going, like saying, like in the moment you're like, one hundred percent. No, literally, literally, everyone goes. I'm, I'm almost positive. Everyone I've ever spoken to, everyone has these, has those exact experiences. Just different. Just you know, like it's literally just a different, a different simulation. But literally, everybody is going through, through those feelings. Way. When you have hard times, like you literally have that "woe is me," then and that's kind of where I was saying before. Like I didn't. I kind of always was like pity party like never yeah, was like bro. enough you know but it's also like I, I guarantee you're gonna agree with this but like you're always comparing yourself to the best so like when i look at somebody he's in their chapter I, this is the best way for me to put it he's in their chapter 15 you know what i mean mm -hmm. and i'm only in chapter two but i'm like ah, i need to be in chapter 15 but it's like whatever happened to the chapters in between like right. you got to go through that shit like maybe they didn't need to go through those chapters because yeah. they're you know what i mean i really do no i really i we talk and that's about just kind of going it's, it's, about, it's about the process, man. The I really journey. do think that 100%, there's no, the actual fruits of what you get if you don't yep. go the right way. It's like, say you get, say you, say you cheat the system or say you get a lucky break or a jump and it was premature. Like, you don't get the, I, I feel like you don't get the actual fruits of it because it's hard to be successful. It's hard to be happy and successful. There's a lot of people who are successful but don't really have that, mm -hmm. you know, like they feel present and they're happy, you know? I think the ones who take the steps, the proper steps, they actually grind it through the shit. They actually bro. can be, you know, successful and happy and stay humble and connected to what they had to go through. Like those memories are ingrained in you. It makes you who you are, you know? Like it really does. Bro. So when you do get up there too fast, that's when things like imposter syndrome or like just feeling like, you know, it's hard to have your feet under you when you when things are just your life is. So changed. that's kind of like what you're saying, though. That's just like a different simulation. That's just my world. Right. But you've gone through the same thing exactly. in your own way, or like and, whatever and it may be. This, whoever's walking on the street right now, right? Exactly. You know what I mean? But exactly. I just think that shit's it's just part of growing up and realizing exactly. that shit, bro. Exactly. The experiences, bro. The experiences are a huge part of it. And it's like think about it. Everything you consume becomes, you know, outside of what we digest and get rid of. Like what we eat becomes us. What we think and what we see, what we consume, it becomes part of what are, our what psyche. Are your, what are your parents, what do the parents used to always say when we're kids? You are who you hang out with? Yeah, yeah. You know, like. 100%. There's a lot how of How long have y'all known each other? You know what I mean? Long time. Long time. We've been. Show what? me your five best friends and I'll show you your future. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so what? It's been 10 years since we've worked together, right? A decade of stud. A decade of stud. <laughs> Hats off to you for making it through. Like, yeah, that's special though, dog. Like, really is. It really is. But I had three lost, songs out. Lost a lot of good men out there. We did. Best, best job I ever had. <laughs> Playing play for the Yankees? <laughs> yeah. You Playing for the Yankees? <laughs> you know that? That wedding crasher? Uh, it's the wedding crashers, like when he's like, they're, they're lying to the girls. Uh, they're in, they're crashing. Have you seen it? Wedding crashers? Yeah. Like Vince Vaughn and all yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's, a, there's, the there's a montage where they're saying we lost a lot of good men out there. Like He's saying like I was a bullfighter. We lost a lot of good yeah. men out there. And then finally he goes, lost a lot of good men out there. And the girl's like, playing for the Yankees? And he's like, <laughs> no, yeah. I don't know that far. You lose, him, you lose him to trades and unruly, unruly, fans. unruly fans. I, I don't want to talk about it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you got to revisit it. I got to look at it. That's a great movie. The Yankees shout out. But yeah, I mean, dude. 
three songs out, he reached out. And, you know, at this point, I have no idea what I'm doing. And, you know, I would need help. Like, I, I, I was just making it on GarageBand in my, like, dorm room at the t- or my apartment. You know Straight what I mean? Right off the computer. And, like, as soon as I get out of school and I start to transition, and, like, I'm going for the Mike Stead thing, he reached out, like, at the very beginning. And he had a studio in New York City. Well, even before the studio, you'll appreciate this. I was living in Manhattan right out of college. I was in Stuyvesant Town, which, like, it was... It was just freshly built. I don't know. Like they, they basically took like these projects and they like remade like, them and stuff like that. And I was literally operating my business out of a room like smaller than this carpet. Yep. And Damn. I had, and I had like my bed and then I had like a desk where I just made beats every day and I'd email artists. That's sick. And that's how I met him. Yeah. So he sent me a beat and I ended up using that's it. It was wild, like the bro. third song I ever came out with. And then I. And what then song is that? Now we got. I got. Oh, Can't Stop Me. It's fucking hilarious. I wish, I wish the video was, it's, the video's not out anymore. We took it down. Yeah, Why'd you guys take it down? Because the, the rebrand. Like, when we wanted to do them, we took down probably, I would say, like, anything, anything I just didn't feel like I wanted to stand beside. Like, I understand it's a crucial part of the story, but I feel like there was ones you wanted to be able to stand beside what I'm doing now and mm-hmm. just... The, the Focus keep, on that. Yeah, like, that's what, the, like, craft the brand into that type of feel. Because there's a lot of racy, kind of the other side of the spectrum shit with the Mike Stud. Like it was, I mean, it was interesting. We had, I would say, it leaned racy though, for sure. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Tiptoe took, the line. We took down Touring's Boring. I don't know if you ever saw that. Touring's Boring. It was, uh, it was basically like a. We were kind of YouTubers before YouTubers. This was like 2012. Yeah, I was. Right? I was in a meeting with a, a big musician's manager the other day, and they were like, "Wow, John Kilmer, you like invented the music vlog." Yeah. We were the first people to you really gotta, vlog. You got to trademark that. We really had a good thing. We have a trademark, <laughs> yeah. for sure. Oh, yeah. really? And then we ended up getting a TV show off of, I wanted it to be Touring's Boring. Of course, the network's like, nope, nah. we're going to do uh, what was What's it called? Like, it was, uh, this is Mike Stud. Like, I wanted, <laughs> to, I wanted to call it, like, the, it was, because it was like a corny, like. They wanted to call it, Mike Stud Does America. <laughs> That's literally what, something they well, offer. Hold on, there's a TV, Beavis and Butthead do America? Yeah, that's, exactly. That's why like, they wanted to call it that. Unreal. How funny. And I remember, remember I almost like, I almost just bagged the whole thing right there. I called him. I was like, you guys, you guys really don't get it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. So it ended up being a dope product. The title I don't like. But like overall for how it was, we had to play a decent amount of tug of war. Like we were editing scenes in our fucking house. For the, and then be on that's TV, hard, bro. Be on TV like two days later. You know? Hey, I think that's wild how creative you got to be to do that stuff, man. Yeah. I, I mean, even like back in the day, bro, like in middle school, I thought like me and my boys freestyle, whatever. And you download an app and you just push a button to make, I couldn't even do that shit, bro. So like, yeah, I don't know how. Man. Like the behind the scenes of music, I think, is so fascinating, man. Like, yeah, I had a fucking, I got to come play some records. I'll play some new ones got I'm to. working on. But yeah, I don't, I don't know, man. I, I would say that's probably the craziest part about the whole thing. It's just like, I didn't, I didn't have any musical inclinations before that, you know? So to have like a second chance, it's been so easy to just stay humble and be like, fuck, man, this is awesome. You know, like mm-hmm. we've been enjoying it. You know, like I said, that period of time, though, it was hard. Like I lost that. I lost that footing and stopped enjoying it and shit. You're so, talking about the the beginning? The yeah, beginning the beginning phase. But yeah, man. It's been Makes I you mean, appreciate it though, bro. Yeah, hundred percent. Now let's talk. I want to talk like to basically your beginning. This this podcast, mm. like the initial model, the initial book I read that gave me the idea for this podcast, I wanted to kind of take in, in like take direction from was Think and Grow Rich. And essentially it was this guy who you know, we don't have to get into the details, but essentially studied the wealthiest people in the world, compiled all the data. For a long period of time. For like, a long what, time. 20 or 30 years? Oh, yeah, wow. A yeah, a long time. Yeah. And it's a crazy story. What's it called? Think and Grow Rich. You I got to look this you up. Gotta, you it's an old it. book. It came out in like 1920, 1930. Well, it literally came out 100 years ago. It's still a bestseller. It's still relevant. It's killing it. Like it's, it's really like insane. I like that. I'm going to look that up. Yeah. And I remember when you know, Larry King called, um, I just name dropped Larry King, but that was a real thing. No, he that's, called, that's fair enough. He called and, and asked, he's like, what's the podcast about? Because like he was, you know, I was trying to get him on and, and I brought that up and he's like, I'm in. You know what I mean? He like, he, he respected it hundred percent because it's like an old classic book. Um, but really it gives you like the, it gives you that understanding of the whole thing. Like there's a, I don't know. What would you say, Kilmer? Like the main, the main message of it. It's almost, it's almost lame to talk about the main message because they like prompt you in the book to like 
pay attention, there's one theme. You know what I mean? The Think and Grow Rich. Yeah, a lot of it is... Um... They want you to like gather it through the stories. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So like they don't necessarily what, tell you. What's that word when you think about stuff until it comes true? Manifest? Yeah, it's a lot about manifesting. Absolutely. But, All but, about that. But like it's, it's like think about this before you go to sleep. Think about this when you wake up. Write it down on a piece of paper a hundred times. Yeah, um, it's a lot about manifestation it re- before the word manifestation even existed because it was a hundred years ago. <laughs> hey, know? I'm all in on stuff like that, man. That, that stuff grabs my attention. Yeah. Oh yeah, bro. What? Think about why that's so special though, because it's 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 like these, you know, older white males in the in the twenties, but they're like in the seventies they were calling these type of people hippies, but these guys were like business guys who had spirituality because that's what that is. It's an understanding of the universe. Like, hell yeah. Oh, no. Like, when I think something, when I write it down, it becomes a real thing. When I put my heart, you know, that book really taught me, like, the feeling it was so important, too. Just, like, when you're manifesting something, like, it's one thing to write it down, but do you, can you believe, are you believing it? Like, because really, like, they say the way, the way the system works overall is just, like, if you're feeling it genuinely, it's hard. Your brain's taking it at your reality. The whole universe is taking it as this is happening, you know? So oh, it attracts yeah. to you 100%. It's interesting to think like 1920s businessmen, white, you know, older white males were on that vibe. Does it talk about, does this book talk about like visual, visual well, I can't say that word, visualization yeah. as well? Yeah, there's, there's an aspect of that, right? Yeah, and this was just like one chapter of it. I mean, it's, uh, it's kind of like a how to and just how to become successful and rich. Uh, and it was it was released during a time when you know the Great Depression happened, so it's a very useful book. I think that's why it caught on so quickly. Yeah. It's because oh, wow. the world needed this book. Did mm-hmm. you say it was one chapter? No, one that chapter. That was just one chapter. One chapter right, kind of right, talks right. about. Dude, I'm gonna look this up because now I'm interested. No, you're gonna fuck with it. You're gonna fuck with it 100. percent So you were saying they're actually into that. You're, you're, yeah. You... So I just actually started working with a metal coach this year, and that I think that's. I've talked also about, elevated I remember Marcus my game. Told me he's just like man, it was like such a smart. Such a thing I needed, you know. Yeah, man. You look. Like, I feel like, as a I don't, as a guy, as a man, like I feel like there's an ego there. It's like I don't need anyone. I'll figure this shit out on my own. Mm-hmm. Like you know, like I'll figure it out. You know, I just feel like that's how I was raised. Like, mm-hmm. and at some point, kind of going back to what we were saying earlier about like the whole happiness part, and I was like, I needed someone to almost like not even vent to, but also like right. share their knowledge to me and do like it. Sh- that shit sucked, bro. Yeah, like you know, it almost felt like class work, but. Now, look, because I, I just started in spring training this past year, mm-hmm. and looking back at the year, there were situations where I could have went the other way, and just from the things he told me to do with my mind, my outlook on stuff, man, mm-hmm. like, I'm telling you, I think that's why I had a good year, it's yeah. because of that. What was, what was, like, what do you think some of the major takeaways? Can well, you even... The thing I said earlier about appreciating the little wins to get you to yeah. the end goal, but um, mm-hmm. writing stuff down. Mm-hmm. And he, one of the questions he asked me, he goes, what do you like to do? And I was like, I like, I'm a nerd, but I like video games. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. He goes, treat your life like a video game. And I go, what do you mean? He goes, all right, well, write on this piece of paper a goal for today. Write that down in the morning. Mm-hmm. Go to accomplish that goal. It can be something little. Like, I'm not, you, just, you know what I mean? Yeah, something yeah, yeah. the smallest anything. thing. Anything. And um, come back and raise it on a one to 10. If you accomplish that goal, you beat That's that level. You go to the, and I just felt like that was a way for me to get momentum. You know what I mean? Just keep yeah. stacking momentum, 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 yeah. and just turn it into blossom into something good. It's interesting. So like, stuff like that. Yeah. Right? Like when you talk about the little wins, though, like think about think about what that really what those really are. Like the little wins, dude. Like, dude, he loves it, bro. <laughs> the, He's little, over here. the little wins. It's it's really all about gaining confidence in yourself. Like where that power comes from is like when you get those little wins and you like even if no one else is seeing them and you're taking inventory you fucking feel of them, it though bro you start you start like that momentum becomes real it's tangible you're looking at it you're like oh look at this i've bingo you know There's what i mean a trend yeah and then and then you start feeling better about yourself what were you just saying though about the guys like you feel it you start to feel what you're writing down and yeah. bro i feel like when you when you when you're in the moment you start seeing those positive trends man you're like and you feel it and then it's like oh okay now 100%. now i can i now i feel my self confidence and it's not a cockiness but right. it's just like I I not I know who I am. Right. I know what I need to do. I know how to flip that switch or turn it back, whatever it may be. Because it's a mind game. Absolutely. Life's a mind game. It really bro. is, bro. It really is. And and that was like, I don't. I I just think that's what's really cool about what's happening now is this, us having this conversation. A young baseball player is going to see this, and they're going it, to. It's it becomes so real so fast. You know what I mean? Like this is all they want to do is be a big leaguer, and they're hearing you get excited about writing down. 
But think bro, about I, that though, like hundred percent. But you're, like you, you're playing on the New York Yankees, but you're it will literally make you feel something, get excited when you're personally getting little wins in your life, and that's really anything. interesting for people to. I think it's a really interesting thing. Like again, it humanizes athletes because yeah, everyone's going through. It's just that different capacity. I do know? it now in the off season, bro. Like yeah. just to like have a goal. Like because off season get get boring as hell, yeah. man. Like it's just so stagnant. But like setting a little goal today, you know what I mean? Like I love that. I love that. I'm a big fan of that, man. Yeah. So just, that's is that part your, of manifesting. Sorry, is no, that no. your is that your for, your only form of journaling? You do other stuff too. Nope. My only, That's my only time, form. man. Yeah, I like it, man. I'm a big fan, and I used to think that it was so eyewash, bro. Like, mm -hmm. man, that's just that's just for, it's not for me. And then it's, I did it, and I got thing. the ego out the way, bro. And I'm like, dude, you got to keep going with it, bro. You got to keep, keep going. going, dude. I'll give you a to. new thing. You got to write down three things you're thankful for every day. I like that. Just do that right now. Every, every morning, the second feeling. you wake up. Right when you wake up. Yeah. Don't look at your phone. Just fucking. That's one thing I'm trying to get better at, bro. Is like. Obviously, the first reaction, your alarm's going off. I'm grabbing my phone. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm laying in bed. I go through whatever. Like, I'm trying to, like, yep. have an hour, you know, get out of bed, drink coffee, have breakfast, come back, shower, whatever. It Even may if be. it's just 15 or 20 minutes. Jay like, Shetty talks about it and Think Like a Monk. Yeah, they talk. All they, Thinking all, Like a Monk? Yeah, think, think Like a Monk. It's a good book. And then there's a, there's a doctor, uh, Andrew Huberman, who talks about this. And it's, it talks about the, the actual, he's a neuroscientist and he's really good at making it comprehensible to the normal person. And that's he, what it's about, bro. You, if you can like, if you can make it so dumb and basic, but also something you can grab. You're like, oh, yeah. Try, like, I have, I have, I have, you could have all the talent or all the knowledge, but if you can't share it and it doesn't connect with people, it's like the musician that sings a lot better than I can. But I figured out a way of connecting with mm -hmm. people where they desire it, want it. You know what it's I mean? Anything too. Yeah. Bro. Um, think like a monk. We were talking about Andrew Huberman. We were talking about. So this this neuroscientist. Uh, Andrew Huberman, you should follow him on it. On, on, it was like one of my favorite follows this year on Instagram. Like he just posts little clips. But he talks about the actual neuroscience behind when you wake up, like there's all different, there's, I want to say it's theta when you're waking up or whatever. There's, all, there's different you know, levels of cycles of sleep. Mm -hmm. And when you wake up, you are so primed for like you just download it all night. And especially if you wrote something good before you go to bed, that's why I do it before yep. I go to bed. You download shit, you have all these experiences, there's a lot of healing that happens overnight, and your brain is like the most, I'm not, I'm not gonna fucking say this properly, but I, I wanna say it's neuroplasticity, where it's like your brain is at its highest level to like, it's, it's at its highest peak, you know? And then when you take it right to a sensory world where you're just like swiping and yeah. seeing a bunch of shit, all the shit that you just, the opportunity that you had just being at that highest state is now taken away, you know? So. Even if you want it, like, I think it's cool. Like, it's dope for you to have, you do whatever you want because your time as a baseball player is so gobbled up. Like, y'all are out there mm -hmm. so much. I don't think people understand the hours. Yeah, like, that's another thing, too. The hours of a baseball player, like, how much you're at the fucking, you know, the park. I was talking to another athlete the other night about this. Um, I asked him, like, what time do you get to the, the stadium for a 7 o'clock game? I said, 4 o'clock. I was like, that... Is un like if I got to the field at four o'clock, it's I insane. That would be like I, I I better have I better have been almost dead. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Like, I'm right. there at twelve thirty, one o'clock. Unless I'm the, the starting pitcher will show up like that, but right. like, yo, four o'clock. Mm -hmm. That's just like the standard report time. I'm like, dang man, crazy. Must be nice, but no, we're there. That's a yeah. From eleven or not? Shouldn't say eleven. Twelve thirty to one till one in the morning if it's a night game, bro. And it's every day. Like y'all play what five games a week for the whole fucking year, pretty much. Or Seven, bro. There's only 20-something off days a year. What's the average? So it's like six You can't and a half. play more than 20 games in a row. <laughs> <laughs> That's ridiculous, bro. Yeah, dude. My, you and there's double headers. That's Can ridiculous. Can you imagine doing 20 concerts in a row? <laughs> I would fucking die. We would dead. be dead. <laughs> and we play 162 really, like, of those I motherfuckers. I talk about this. And 30 in spring training, plus the playoffs. And then I mean, like, it's a lot. I love that shit, but God damn it. Yeah, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. So it's just like, I, I like the idea of you having you know, some time to, like, be on your phone and tap in with the world if you want. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. you don't have to demonize that, I don't think. No, no, Like, no. at all. What we were saying was just, like, right when you wake up, do that because of that brain state thing that I was just talking about. I like you know? that. And I'm going to try it tomorrow. What's that? I'm going to try it tomorrow. Try it. Yeah, try it. And then I'll keep adding. And say, I got, I'm going to put you on some books, too. No, please. I, yeah. I really, I already forgot it, but I, I want after this shit. We'll yeah, Think and Grow Rich. There you go. Yeah, that, that, we could start there. That's a good one to start. There's with. another book I'm shocked you haven't brought up yet. <laughs> <laughs> I had this running joke where I put everyone on the book. It was, it was the first book that, that I ever read that was like a spiritual book, and I was like taken away by it. I was just like, 
yes. I was like, this is exactly. <laughs> it's like reading the Bible. This is exactly what I was looking for. Yeah. I've never read the Bible, even to this day. You know, like I just didn't grow up religious. Like I was, a, I was just like a happy, positive family, but it wasn't tied to a religion or a God necessarily, you know? Um, and yeah, just like as I've gotten older, man, as I've gone through the experiences, the spirituality has been a huge thing for me. It really oh, yeah, has. Man. It really has. Hey, I was hey, low key. We're, I don't know where Steve's at. I was about to say some good shit, and Steve came up. And I, I lost it, bro. Steve, Steve, like fuck around. He He'll, like actually little, demands. He does a little you. paw thing. He, yeah, yeah, bro. He's like a boss. He, like he's like, bro, pet me. What are you doing? Like, You're in my presence. I'm right here. Yeah, <laughs> I'm right here. Yeah, Steve's uh, Steve's lived a very interesting life. So he's a. You were saying he's a chiller. I don't think he would have been like. I don't know. I think even as a puppy, he was four. Like. As a puppy, he was shot out of a cannon, nuts. We went and got him trained when we went on tour the first time, and he was a lot. That was he took a huge step forward. But he's a, these this breed Australian Shepherd. They like being taught. That's in their breed. Like, yeah, yeah. So taking them to a trainer is like the right vibe. They fuck with it because they actually like get excited when they get taught things. You know what I mean? So smart dogs. Yeah. What, are they are they uh, cattle? Yeah, dogs? kind of. They're like they're, that, they're herders. That, they're herders. Yeah, they're, they're herders. herders. So that was my yeah. point. Like, think about it. He's like five year old. He should be out herding on the fucking farm. All he's day. just chilling. But he's just chilling heavy because the lifestyle. One of our after Drinking parties. He herds, he herds all the women. He when, really when does. <laughs> Bro, he's like he's like actually a wingman. Like, I don't think we've ever talked about this. His vibe at the parties, like he just be like, and all the girls like, oh, and he'll like I love come him. up and cruise. He'll just cruise up and like sit next to him and look at him. Dude, he was when, when I he was never, like, it's you a never see him with a dude. When, never see him. When with we a moved dude. to our new house in L.A., it was all part of like my my Bumble date nights. With yeah. the closer was Steve. That was it. The second I brought him home, Steve would come as running up. As long as they said, like, exactly. The they told me. <laughs> as soon as they said, I'll, I'll come home for a drink. Because, you know, that's where it go. You want to go home for a drink? When, when, as soon as they said yes, in your head, you're probably like, it's over. I got well, see, Steve. I, I got, I got Steve. Steve. Dude, I'm Steve's the best. I'm fucking mental. Steve's the fucking closer, bar owner over here. <laughs> I'm mental. At the bar, I'll have Steve as my screensaver. And I'll put the phone down next to her. And she'll be like, is that your dog? I'm like, yeah, he's back, he's back at the house. That is the most... <laughs> <laughs> He's back at the house. Hey, I want to know. I gotta go feed him. I, I gotta go feed him. You can come if you want. That's so good. <laughs> That's the most veteran shit. I gotta go home and feed him. He said. Yeah. Wow. How many times have you used that? I don't want you to lie right now, dude. I no. I, I wrote about it in my journal. This is what I do for my journal. I, I have like a whole like uh, oh, fuck, screensaver oh, day fuck yeah, I do. I have a whole TED talk. They say like ten thousand. The rule ten thousand hours. If you spend ten thousand hours on something, you become a, a pro at it. <laughs> I've been a pro at first dates, Bumble first dates. You really have. I brought hey. up the same bar. I say the same things. We do the same stuff. But we, we have our first kiss in the same exact ten location out of ten. at the bar. 10 out of 10. <laughs> say the same After the same line I say right before, I love it. Always okay. be closing. The same Always chair. This just like the same little. Same seats. The bartenders know exactly what's going on, but I tell them to hush You up. again. <laughs> Three, four days a week. Too good. Same place. That is too good. Yeah. That's that's the most. I can't shit say I've I can heard. relate to that in any way whatsoever. I've never done anything of this. Never sort. in my life. <laughs> yeah. yeah You're not different. a big date guy. I mean, dude, not I, a big was, date guy? I was just talking to somebody about this. I was I was just talking to I was talking to a girl, and she's just like, you know, we don't really spend much time together. So she, like, she, there's aspects of my personality. She's like trying to she's trying to tell if it's for real or if it's fake. You know what I mean? And I was basically telling her like. You'd be shocked. Uh, you could probably like, you could probably under ten dates my entire life, bro. Like, I dated. Wow, bro. I like. I just always got up with girls. I always it would never be a date. Like, I would never. I mean, I would go out with groups of. I would go out with groups. And they're there. You know what I mean? But like, I had a. I had at Duke. I didn't go on one fucking date. It was college. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, we just. And then right when that. So I go from college, high school. I don't even think I went on dates. I fucked a few girls. You know, there was, yeah, I, we I were, had a girlfriend all through high up. school, so like I was, you know, I was stay doing that I, shit. I hooked, up in high, I hooked up in school actually a little bit towards the end, which I just I don't, I don't know if I've ever really realized that in hindsight. Yeah, like so, but no dates. That wasn't the vibe at all. Like it was kind of a ghetto school too. Like I Duke. Was, I was in Pawtucket. Pawtucket. Oh, I thought you, I was in Duke high school. Yeah, yeah. And then when I go to Duke. Man, we're just not ghetto. We're we're wild. Oh no, yeah, not, not ghetto. There. Beautiful, beautiful, bro. Beautiful. Have you wow. been? Uh, yeah, yeah, really nice. <clears throat> wow. Um, a little boring, like in the sense of like, if you want the college crazy experience. Yeah, I mean, it, it, but it was amazing. It reminds me of just like a really wealthy golf neighborhood. Yeah, and then you just got a beautiful university. Yeah, in the middle yeah, of it. and then you know, there I'm not I'm not going on dates. Like we're we going go. to the bars on the after the series. 
you know? Like, yeah, yeah. You want to see me come pitch? Sunday night, like, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sunday night, I was turning up in Chapel Hill, you know? What was Chapel going on Hill. at the baseball house during those days? Oh, the baseball, baseball guys at Duke, I mean, we had some, we had some, we were fortunate to have some lady killers, like, just as people. You know what I mean? There was, like, a handful of guys that, that would get it done regardless, you know? <laughs> and then, because, like, Duke, yeah, like, I would argue that you can't really even say there's, like, baseball groupies at Duke. You know what I mean? Like, there's, there's just, you know, there's obviously an appeal. Your appeal is higher. The like, main girls focus might is, fuck the basketball team's the main focus, right? Exactly. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's just, like, college baseball, bro. No one, unless yeah. you're, like, certain schools in certain regions of the country, mm -hmm. like, yeah. no one, like, the base, it's not really that, like, you know what I mean? That's the one thing I just... I don't ever regret anything, but like I don't have the four years of college or three years of college. I've always wondered, like, I love hearing other people's yeah. college experiences because I went to one baseball house party in my life and it was that I was going to San Diego State yeah. and they're throwing a huge party that night and it was called Defiance. And dude, I've never witnessed anything like this before in my Just life. Like, wow. Well, bro, like I remember, <laughs> I remember the dude, I'm gonna, I don't, I don't remember his name, uh, but there's a chick, it was his house. He was like the older guy who was giving me the tour. And, uh, <laughs> We're walking downstairs, and this chick's like, hmm. almost like hysterically like talking on the phone, right? Mm -hmm. And he goes, "Are you on the phone at my fucking party?" <laughs> <laughs> it was this bad listen, castle? Listen, bro. He goes, he goes, "Who are you talking to?" He goes, "My boyfriend, my boyfriend." And he goes, "Not here." Opens the door and throws her phone out the door. I'm like, wow. "Yo, this is the craziest shit I've ever wow. ever been a part of." This yeah, sounds like nuts, something Thad Castle would do. Uh, great <laughs> show, exactly. great show, exactly. Yeah, but dude, this dude was nuts. Crazy. Nuts. It was funny actually. If, uh, Dude, I wish I remembered his name, um, but I was just at a wedding this past weekend, and uh, there was a San Diego State teammate there mm -hmm. of his, and mm -hmm. I asked him, I was like, what's he doing now? And dude, he just, nothing good things to yeah. say, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, baseball, like, <laughs> if, as you can tell from that story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he killed the guy, he's, he's in jail. <laughs> guy was, like, aggressively abusing people <laughs> at a very early age. <laughs> But yeah, wild, bro. Yeah, crazy. I mean, we had a we had a good we had a good team. We had a probably the best team we had they had had in a long time there. A freshman year, I just looking back, I had like that. I had such a like every single break went my way. Like it was such a last hurrah. Like that was the last time I was healthy. Freshman year? Yeah, freshman year. So I go. You did this what sophomore? TJ. So I had it. So I had it um, right as the sophomore season started. Because when, when, basically when I went to the summer, I started to have elbow issues, right? So when I go into sophomore season, my elbow starts hurting. It, it, it's not necessarily like healing, which is time. Um, they're just like, man, you know, let's go get an MRI, get an MRI. It's right in that middle ground. So this is- It's like you can this, rehab this it. This is the crazy part because it actually ends up really fucking my baseball career. We opt to not do the surgery, right? Yeah. So we rest, I'm rehabbing, I'm like, fuck it, it's sophomore year anyway, whatever. Gotcha. I go to the Cape sophomore after, I just sat out the whole sophomore season, go to the Cape after, two games in, pop. Snap. So then Bro. I miss a whole other year. So I went from freshman year, now I'm a senior. Yeah, I, I have two chills, years dude. left, all my boys are getting drafted, like, and really I was, you know, but, you know, it was exactly the way it needed to happen, really. It, it was. I was going to say it, bro, but like, spiritually, like, brother. It just wasn't your path. Yeah, you know? no, it wasn't. And, and, and arriving at that was, was uh, something I would say it didn't happen. It's crazy to say, but it didn't happen until I was like 28, 27. That's like three years ago. You know what I mean? Like four years back maybe where I was like, oh, shit. Like, you know, I actually, this was really what I was supposed to be doing for sure. And like, I'm sure that, you can feel that shit too. Yeah, and then you have an opening and then you realize like it's all – everything like as we've said you know what i mean you need all those phases all those steps start to understand that shit bro. yeah you really do on like a universal level you're just like you're able to kind of apply that to life in general um i always think back to that like I'm like oh, fuck. i know what pops meant now you know what i mean like yeah just, you know how it is as a kid you're like man you don't know what the hell you're talking about right but it's like dang right with with experiential wisdom with the experience mm. comes like this knowing of shit you know like this Real. understanding you know um, I, I, I don't want to jump past your beginning. I know we, we kind of just jumped around, but I want to, I want to go through your, your phase. Um, just like, even like, think about your childhood or like things, you know, memorable times. That, yeah. I like to understand like what makes you. Who I am? The way you are, you know what I mean? And, in, and like, in terms of what, are you talking like baseball experiences? Well, just like in general, like, you know, you could just give us a little synopsis of like, you know, 
high school or even growing up, you have mem certain memories yeah, before that. That's but just, tough, man. It's is it hard? Yeah, but I'll, I'm going I'm to wing it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Fuck yeah, it. Yeah, just... Uh, you know, I grew up, um, dude, I remember playing t-ball with my dad. I was, I was in a purple pinstripe old Diamondback jersey. That was my first team, I believe, with the purple. You know what I'm talking uh -huh, about? I know exactly. Uh, Randy Johnson, Johnson baby. Randy Johnson. Yeah, hell <laughs> yeah. Shout out. But uh, yeah, I just remember just running around, bro, just being a fucking kid. Like, yep. I didn't know, obviously, I'm four years, five years old. I'm just trying to, my dad would just be like, wherever you went, like, <laughs> That's like wherever the ball was. Hit, if I was playing shortstop, I'd run to fucking right field, go get the ball. You know, I was just doing <laughs> yeah, dumb yeah, shit yeah. like that. But uh, yeah, man, I just grew up in it. I, I rode motorcycles growing up. Wasn't really into that, but uh, that's an interesting, an interesting side hobby for a baseball player. You know, like I feel like they don't. I did. I did never hear of, that. All my friends though. So like my one of my best friends um, growing up was Nick Lapaglia, and they had a dirt bike track okay. in their backyard. So but like all my friends. In high school, all rode oh, like, skateboards, rode bikes, rode mm -hmm. dirt bikes. So like that's what I did as a kid. You know right. what I mean? But like looking back at it, I want to. I wish, or I'm glad I didn't get in, like do baseball year round because I would have been burnt out, bro. Right. Like, and I think that made me appreciate it because once I got to, I snapped my leg in half <laughs> riding dirt bikes in sixth grade, mm. and ever since then, I my dad sold everything, Laid off, yeah. and that's when I kind of figured out. I, like, oh, I guess I'm kind of good at baseball. Yeah. And that's when I really dedicated all my time to it. But like by age 15, I was like, man, like, I feel like I just started doing this shit. You right. know what I mean? Just getting the hang of it. Yeah. Because my little brother, man, he was doing that shit every fucking weekend, you know, because I feel like his generation, like when I was growing up and we were growing up, like, I feel like there was really no travel ball. Right. Like it just no, started. Not as much. Yeah, like it not just started. And like, bro, when my brother was like 12, 11, dude, it was a job. It was Monday through Friday it's practice, crazy. like Saturday, Sunday, you're playing nine games. That's like, bro, what? It's, crazy. it's so many, it, dude, and my brother's coach was a crazy. Like, I remember coming back, I was in high school, I was like, this guy was my high school coach, I would probably want to quit. Like, you know what I mean? It was wow. nuts. Like, running these kids, doing push-ups, like nuts. But, yeah, yeah. Um, I think that just made me love the game more, bro. And then my junior high school, I was like, yeah, this is it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And I was, I'm just going to dedicate everything I can to this. But mm -hmm. I love that shit, bro. Mm -hmm. I just love sports. I like so, being an athlete. So you were in California. Mm -hmm. And then where'd you go next? What was the next phase? Uh, well, so I got, I was going go to go to us, Tell us your story of getting, you know, you're converting to the professional ranks. Okay. So um, I got drafted in the fourth round. And then I remember three days later, I went straight to Tampa. Like just got graduated high school. And I was like, dude, I want to get my shit going. You know what I mean? This is... That's the way. This is my dream, you know? So I go to fly to Tampa with my dad. And I remember, I was like, I just got dropped by the Yankees. We're going to be at a nice hotel. You know, we show up at a Comfort Inn. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of good times at a Comfort Inn for us. <laughs> so my dad's like, this is where you're going to stay? I go, yeah, this is where all the players are staying. And I just remember, I don't know anything. So I see, I see um, a lot of the Latin guys out there. There's a pond where they're, comfort, they're fishing. You know, like, mm -hmm. I'm like, what's going on? You know what I mean? Like, hey, what's going on, guys? Yeah, you know, so, like, there's just a lot of culture shock for me that I didn't know was the going on. The other ball players were fishing? Yeah, for, like, their dinner and stuff, like, in that little pond. They were fishing for their dinner. Yeah, bro. Oh, fuck. Like, dude, it was That's nuts. A whole different it was way. a whole experience. <laughs> what? But, dude, these, this I was... they were fishing for leisure. I'm like, oh, whatever. <laughs> Not no, that but crazy. bro, they were doing that, and then I remember the first night. These were drafted ball players. Yeah, these were these were, were like six fishing years. in a pond by a comfort inn. Yeah, bro. I mean, you don't to make eat? you don't make anything in the minor leagues, like you know, like it's, yeah, you really don't. It's, it's nuts, man. Yeah, I mean, they're also coming from fucking probably Nothing. extreme poverty. Yeah, these are the right. Latin guys. Latin, Latin, from Latin guys. What's the standard contract for like minor leagues, like fifty fifty thousand a year or something? Oh uh -huh. man, there's so many more. I mean, you're the, you should answer this. What, what did you just ask? Like a like a standard contract, like the amount you'd make per year as like a single A, double A is like you make twelve hundred a month. Twelve hundred a month. Wow, uh, uh, that's single A. That is, I think that's before you even get put on the roster, bro. Okay. So I think my paychecks were like nine nine hundred bucks after taxes. That's crazy. <laughs> so like, so to answer your question, the fishing part, like I get it. Like you know what I mean. Yeah. Like, I, got, I was fortunate enough to get like a little bit of money in the draft. So like, right. Thank, thank and they're, and they're there's coming. some dudes. Signing yeah. for a bag of chips. Dude. Like, I just want to play. You know what I mean? I just want a chance. So, yeah, like, how many rounds? How many rounds in the MLB draft? They just changed it, bro, to 40? It was more than that before, I think it was right? 50 something, bro. But 50, think about that. 30 <laughs> teams. Oh however many fucking teams. Yeah. That's, so, there's guys, there's tons of guys getting nothing. Yeah. So, that was a culture shock. And then there was like cockroaches in my bed the first night. So, I was like, dude, what did I just get myself into? And no one really knows this story. So, like, how crazy. Your fourth rounder. To the New York Yankees, and that's your experience. Yeah, out of the but game. hold on, it gets it gets better. But 
there's only a handful of people that know this story right here. So it's kind of because it's kind of embarrassing. I feel like I look like a bitch, but <laughs> nah, you gotta let it fly. Um, <laughs> my first day, uh, I got picked up by the shuttle. Five in the morning, we have a game, right? And so I get on the shuttle, and I'm the only white dude, only dude that speaks English. So mm -hmm. I'm like, ooh, okay, this is gonna be tough, you know? And um, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know, I don't know what's going on. Like, yeah. you know? So I'm sitting there, and this dude starts yelling at me, and I'm like, man fuck's going on in spanish <laughs> yeah oh yeah but like i can tell in the tone of his voice like, like it angry like it ain't nice like he ain't saying <laughs> nice shit you know what i mean just by like, the way he was speaking and uh we play the game and luckily you know, miguel andujar who i played every single level with he's still with the yankees in the big leagues yeah we get back on the bus and this kid his, his last name is tamarez but um i don't remember his first name keeps yelling at me saying like mama way well trumpy trumpy and like i mean suck my dick let's fight and I like kind of stand up and he gets up and slaps me across the face. <laughs> oh my God. And I'm sitting there like, okay, now I'm hot. Now wow. I'm mad. I'm like, do I punch this guy in the face my very first day and I just got drafted or do I sit my ass down? So I remember Miggy, thank God, he was, he's a good friend of mine. He like grabbed him and put him down. So I was like, all right, thank God. That was my very first day in pro ball. So interesting. Nuts, bro. And I remember my Great. dad was still back to the thing. I was like, bro, you're never going to believe what happened. He's like, thank God you didn't punch him. That's like, exactly bro. what you're supposed to do. But bro, like, basically, you would have you you ended were, up in serious, you know, like, you know what I mean. But <laughs> that reputation thing right away, they're like, oh, guy gets in a brawl, and, like, and I was a fourth round pick, bro. And like, I know that's a high pick, but like, that ain't a high pick. Yeah, know? yeah, no. I you know what I mean? I like, if you're a first mean. rounder getting like five million dollars, you can get away with some shit. But like, I, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was my first experience. But ever since there, bro, I had the time of my life. Met some of my closest friends that I'm still friends with. Mm. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of went. I went. I got to the big leagues fast. Was in Tampa for a year. Then we went to Charleston. So Charleston was in low A my first full year, 2014. South Carolina? Yeah, and so like not talking about not having a college experience, that was my college experience there you go. that summer. I was just going to say, those girls, I mean, there's, Dog, a, there's was, a good little culture oh, down there. Oh, man, it was fun. Yeah. That was a good time. So yeah, that was a good time. You probably, you, probably, you, know, you probably were going off. Oh, yeah, there. so hold on a sec. So this is, <laughs> this is what made it a college experience. So where we lived, bro, um, it was kind of not in a good area, so everybody lived in the same complex. And everyone was the it's homie. College. Like, everyone was young. They just got drafted. Like, all, everyone just wanted to go out, have a good time, and play baseball, right? So we would, like, hang out playing beer pong at someone's place. Andy Beresford, Phil Wobby was there. Um, but we're just getting, getting fucked up, bro, going out. Um, but dude, it was the time of my life. So that was, like, four years of college and one. And then Tampa again for high A. Trenton, which we talked about. And then, God forbid, Scranton. That's the worst place on earth. But... Um, I, me and Aaron, Judge, talk about this all the time. Mm -hmm. We're, what I think is one of the, even cooler than playing for the Yankees, but something that I like will never let go of is not many guys get drafted by the Yankees and go all the way up and still stick around. It's like, well, right. if you look around, there's like, how many left are you? You know, who did that before right. the people now? You know, the Jeters, the Posada. I'm mean, not like, comparing ourselves to them, but right, right, that shit's right. cool, bro. You yeah, know what I mean? Cool like, in New York, too, like, Man, the people, that's one thing. I tell my parents this, too, because it's like, I want to play every day, whatever it may be. Right. But it's like, I'm playing for the best organization. And, uh, it's a crazy life. Any, but it's like, a crazy experience you're, yeah, you're in bro, the middle the, of, bro. It's the, like, people, the people that I've been able to learn from that I can just sit back and be a sponge, dude. Like, I want to, like, I wouldn't change that experience. Like, CC, Brett Gardner, Troy Tulowitzki, all these players that have come by oh, and I've been able guys. to play with, bro. Like, Alex Rodriguez, I've been around Derek Jeter. Like, mm hmm I'm not getting that experience and that knowledge if I'm going to play for the Oakland Athletics or the Baltimore. And there's nothing wrong yeah, yeah, with those yeah. organizations, but it's just like no. the resources that New York has, bro. Like, I, dude, I'm forever grateful for that because, like, I don't know where I would be. Like, like from the baseball knowledge standpoint, dude, wow. like, unbelievable. It's interesting. It's crazy, dude. Like, it's really Reggie Jackson's always around. Like, oh, it's endless names, yeah. bro. Like, it's fucking nuts. And to think about it, like, you know, being being a New York Yankee, the the weight of that itself, it, it's just like I try to just zoom out of the athlete thing and like even that, like learning and talking from these athletes, that's all great. But just like as a fucking human being, yeah. the experience you're in the middle of is is quite literally at a lot of people's pinnacle of like living your dream, you know. And now you're there's it's athletes don't ever even want to accept that or think about that because it, like, they're scared of being complacent, you know, like. These are people that are so highly competitive that it's never enough. Yeah. But I try to challenge you to have be able to have both. You know what I mean? Where it's yeah. like, 
that that's awareness. a good perspective because though. and dansby me and dansby talked about that for a long time like he has he's found that through his own faith you know mm -hmm. just like bigger than you, you kind of zoom out of the hey, baseball but that's how you shit. slow shit down too exactly life, life speeds up on you quick bro and i feel like being able to take a step back like okay like this is where I'm at, and this is what I need to do. Or this is the direction I need to go. Yeah. Because rather, because I feel like when you're in the shit, it's like, all right, well, fuck. Like you're right in it. Oh, fuck, you know, you know like, what I mean? So 100%. I don't know. I definitely vibe with that, dude. 100. percent So I want to. We still haven't really done it. I want. I want to hear more about just like becoming a Yankee. Um, what those emotions were, and if you could point us to any, yeah, like, any of the moments really, but just like. I don't know. I just feel like that's an interesting thing. Obviously, viewpoint. getting my getting drafted. So the way it happened, my agent, I still was pissed about this, but he was like, I'm gonna call you two picks before, obviously, and then we'll let you know. So I'm sitting there and I don't hear my name, the Yankees are next, and uh I just hear my name come out of the TV. And I'm like, That's my hearing shit, and he just he wanted me to like get the, like the authentic experience. That's dope. And so I appreciate that because like, dude, my I was sweat, I'm sweating thinking about it, That's but dude, dope. it was sick. But uh, obviously, that was like a surreal experience because my family was there and everything. Shout out like to that. him. What's his name? Joe Longo. Joe Longo. That's Thanks, dope. Joe. I but like uh, that. that was sick. Uh, and then obviously, the, my debut, man. Not necessarily, I debuted on the road. Mm -hmm. So I debuted in Chicago and then went to Houston, which was insane because that was in the middle of, that was in 2017 in July. And so it was like the two best teams in, yeah. the, in the AL going at it. It was a playoff atmosphere. I was like, bro, this is what were, this what, is the big leagues. This yeah, is put, nuts. A, put us there. What was it, what was going through your head? Oh when you shit! Were out? So Just well, like, luckily I uh, I debuted in Chicago and it was raining and this was before they were really good. And so there's really no one there. So I got to settle in. A little buffer. Yeah, I got to settle in a little bit. Got my first hit there. Nice. Um, family was there, and then we go to Houston, and I grew up playing shortstop second. I just started playing left, center, and right. And but like very never like never played the outfield really yeah and so we get to Houston first game play, I'm playing fucking right and I'm like <laughs> this is coming in you know what I mean like here we go you know and we go out right there the fire. yeah bro but I was like all right here we go and I remember we get there I'm getting fucking yelled at I'm like oh, okay yeah. this and I like when people talk shit I'll give it back but like uh -huh. this is my Third day in the big leagues, like I, can't. I don't think I don't think fans understand what the fucking right fielder and the left fielder go through. And I talk about this all the time, so like me being able to, I'll go back to the the emotional abuse you guys have taken over dead the years, ass, bro. Yeah. It's, especially in New York, those guys are ruthless. Oh, yeah. And then playing in Boston, oh man. Yeah, we'll, we'll get into Fenway later because I'm I'm from Boston. We'll <laughs> yeah. get into that later. But I was saying the experience the experience from playing the infield and the outfield. In the infield, you're chilling, you're having a great time. You don't hear anyone yelling at you. Outfield, you're hearing. Yeah, everything. Infield, you're in your own little world. Out yeah, there. chilling, yeah. dancing, having a good time. Sure. But uh, Houston, so I'm sitting there, you know, kind of nervous. You know, it's loud. Yeah, yeah. And Springer swung first pitch and hit a homer off the train track. So I'm like sitting there, and that place erupted. And I didn't know they did the horn. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh. Bro, I like, <laughs> dude, I, dude, I, I was like, oh fuck, you know what I mean? If there's a camera on me, I like, duck. So you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. So you know, you're brand new to the big leagues. Yeah, you know? bro. You just didn't uh, even so that was my first experience. <laughs> I Dude, it was That's nuts. That's so funny. But no, that was sick. And then I settled in, and then um, we were facing McCullers, I think, that um, that game. But yeah, man, that was a sick experience. And then debuting in New York, that was getting the roll call and shit. Like, that for me, that does You got not, a roll call in New York on your first... You get it every day. Because like, so, do you oh, know true, the, true, the bleacher true. creatures out there? Yeah, yep, yep. I'm Bottom of the first, or top of the first, they go, you know, whatever. They start in center. Everyone's got their own sign or whatever it may be. Um, but that was when it hit me because I was like, I've never heard my name being chanted before. You know what I mean? That's but dope. That was dope as fuck, that's bro. That's dope. Yeah. And, but that still is dope as fuck to this day, and it's cool. I always look around, um, like when, like if we play like the Rangers or whoever it may be that's from the West Coast and doesn't get to come to Yankee Stadium, mm -hmm. I feel like every single person in that dugout was locked in. Yeah. On like what whoever is doing their role call. I don't know. I think right. it's pretty cool. Yeah. You know, it's it's you're in an interesting position. I feel like there's not. Many of you in today's game, the utility player, like yeah. actually the utility where you play like play more than two, right? Yeah, like, I play everything but first and catcher. That's but insane. dude, so I, I, I don't, it's weird how life works its way out. But I remember Gary Dembo called that's, me. That's in the, That's pretty crazy. Yeah, call, came to me in 2015. Came off a great year. I was in Double A. I was 20 years old, 19 years old. I was like, this is. I'm there, you know what you I mean? You were nearly dying there. every night in Trenton when you went home. Yeah, but right? You were bawling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But uh, he's like, hey, what do you think about going to the Fall League and being a utility player? And I remember I heard the word utility, and I said, fuck no. I was like, yeah. hell no. Nah. Like, because I, I, I just thought about players in the minor leagues that were utility guys. I was like, no. Nah. I was right. like, don't get it twisted, bro. I was like, yeah. I'm going a, I'm to a be a, a big player in the big league. You yeah, know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like, I don't want to do that. She's like, dude, I'm telling you, in a couple of years, 
you're like the whole league is gonna have guys like you like you need to do this like this is gonna be great for you like mm. and i was like man is this guy giving me lip service right now like, yeah what the fuck's going on and then 2017 comes around and you, all you hear about is like brock holt ben zobris and all these dudes and then mm. like it's like oh shit and that's mm -hmm. how i got to the big leagues bro like, wow you know what i mean like if if i didn't play all these different positions i probably wouldn't have had all the service time and all the you know what i mean so like i'm think very, about that yeah, bro. And then you look at guys like Kike Hernandez, who's getting paid as utility oh, yeah. players. Chris Taylor with the Dodgers. Yeah. Like, bro, that's such a, like, you're basically four dudes in one. You know what I mean? If you can play, especially if you can play shortstop and center, the two primary positions, bro, like. If you think about what the, va like, what that's, you can't put a value what on that's that. done to your experience, too. It's, you know, it's crazy because, like, you almost, it's the thing you initially fuck no immediately to is probably what has transcended your experience. Hey. And I feel like if you look at it now, all the young guys that come up, they all play different positions. Yeah, that's really cool. That's interesting even in general. You think about even where the NBA went, like the big man kind of disappeared, like yep. the traditional big man. Like it's this big hybrid of a basketball player. Depending on your size, it doesn't matter. It's just how athletic are you? How good of a scorer are you? How good mm -hmm. of a defender, you know? Um, but it's interesting. It sounds like baseball is kind of morphing into that same scenario. Yeah, you just need that athleticism, bro. I think athleticism in anything plays. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You know, you don't want a bunch of stagnant dudes out there that can't do anything. Like that's Yeah. hundred percent. That's really cool. It just yeah, man. I think I think it's badass, bro. Like I love being athletic. I think there, I, there's a Chinese parable that that it's been it's been kind of used in different places in different ways, but the parable essentially is like it's about a farmer and essentially all these bad things are happening. And then a good thing would happen, and a bad thing would happen, and a good thing would happen. And no matter what happened, when the commentary came around from his neighbors or his family, he said, who knows what's good or bad, you know? Oh, like, shit. Like, and there were, you know, his son ended up, ended up breaking his leg on a horse, a wild horse that they found, which was normally a positive thing. So when positive, negative, basically, the wild horse comes, the kid gets on it, breaks his leg. They're like, oh, how terrible. He's like, who knows what's good or bad. A week later... The service they, they go to war and they come by and he he doesn't go to legs. war because he broke his leg who knows what's good or bad it just continues and continues damn you know? bro that's it's really that's deep it's a really interesting thing and it can change your fucking your outlook whole outlook shit. it's really what we've been talking about that's the name of this episode who knows what's good or bad because like <laughs> hey yeah, I like yeah that. because like even what we were saying our story our takeaway is just like we needed all those bad things to happen we needed all the living in trenton and almost getting shot and fucking you know dealing with the trials and tribulations of all of all of our journeys you know what i mean i think at every level john can say anyone you know depending on how how open they are how much awareness they have on themselves i think everyone's going through that same story line. in different ways yeah just in different ways That's how you navigate bro yeah exactly speaking of good or bad how bad was it playing right field at fenway did you play right field at fenway oh yeah <laughs> um i get it worse in center there because right field there is so big yeah, you was, know what I mean? I was going to say, like, I it don't is wanna, big. not to talk shit, cause, but, like, there's a different class of people in the bleacher seats in the outfield. Like oh, yeah. Like, I, I, well, I, I feel like. I'm not talking shit because my brother sits there. Yeah. <laughs> He's out there with the monsters. He's he, probably the, the one talking the goons. shit. Get I you hear there. it, but I hear it in BP more than I do during yeah. the game because, obviously, you're in BP, you're just more balls over there. Yeah. You don't know how many times you're running out in right field, but... uh no, that's some of the best shit talking I've heard is in Boston. But I love, dude, I love that shit. Like, yeah. I feel like that's well, what makes the game still, fun. I, mean, you know, I, grew like, up, I grew up 10 minutes outside Boston, and you just got to know, like, the environmental program of hitting the Yankees, it starts from day one, right out of the womb. So this guy's been sitting there like, I hate Hey, Kilmer, tell him what your uh, computer password is. <laughs> yeah, Mike, Mike the other day. I hate the Yankees or fuck the Yankees? Mike yesterday, he's like, hey, what's my password for uh, my, Zoom. Zo my Zoom that account? That was today. Oh, that was today? <laughs> Our sense of time is terrible. <laughs> yeah. And I, I set up his account, and I'm like, what the fuck is it? And I'm testing it. I'm like, oh, I set the account up. It's uh, Yankee Suck 69. <laughs> No, that was literally today. And I'm like, I don't even hate the Yankees anymore. I'm a fucking grown ass man. Yeah, but like, that's just no, how you I, fucking hate them. No, it's how I grew up. Yeah. You we, have like, we have a plan to kidnap you after yeah. this. It's just, <laughs> it's just been like a part of me, like forever since it's I can so funny. Than you, bro. It's so yeah. funny that the people, uh, the, <laughs> that's people funny the people in that area, bro, New England, ruthless. Yeah. It's crazy how much they fucking li live, breathe, and die. Well, it's because the, the, the fucking Boston sports is such a New England Patriots. Like it has such a history of sports in that town. Uh, right? Yeah, I, I, know. I feel like the same thing with New York, bro. Like there's such like this the culture, the history there. Like they're used to winning in both cities. Totally. Like, Yankees so fans just... will shit on their own team. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's oh, something yeah. I've yeah, never probably, seen. Before. They're oh, probably yeah. just they're probably harder. That's something harder I've never seen them. before in my life. I went to Yankee Stadium. They're just yelling at their own players. So I'm like, God, give them a break. It's your it's your team. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what it is, man? It's it's uh there's like a certain 
It's what people said, talk about playing in New York and Boston. It's like, it's like everyone's like, "What are you doing for me?" Like that's what's different. Yeah, yeah, it's different, <laughs> but there's just like it's a crate. Their passion's so high that you, it's like you it makes it. up yeah. for like the the like the pros and the cons of it. You know, there's just so much passion about it. It's so and much. You could speak to this probably. Like, yeah, well, I'm just talking about like the fan base. Like when you play, I'm lucky enough. I grew up in the ALE, so there's fucking packed like Toronto, right? And every team's good, bro. Right. You know. Um, and our fan base travels well, but like, yeah, for sure. If we're playing a a Tuesday game, and I'm just trying to think, dude, um, trying to think of the Tigers. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, there's, I'm like, damn, this is what. And and we're in town, and there's like twenty thousand. Like, this is terrible. <laughs> right. But like, I talk to players, like, dude, this place is packed out. I'm like, bro, I, <laughs> yeah. there's no heartbeat for me right now, bro. Like, yeah. Is, but like, that's I, an interesting I, factor. So like, cause like, dude, there, in Yankee Stadium, there's forty five thousand every night. You playing in Boston, it's thirty five thousand packed yeah, out every nuts. single yeah, night. It's a playoff atmosphere every game. It's like. That's all I know, bro. Like, so playing in Oakland sometimes, it's like, <laughs> interesting, really interesting. Yeah, that's a whole other set of. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. Like again, there's, and it's there's, totally outside of the player's control, really. You know what I mean? Like, on what team you end up on? Oh yeah, yeah it's like for sure. you're an artist. But you don't think part. about that. You're an artist. You control it. Like, the bigger of an artist you are, the more tickets you sell when you do a show. So it's in your control. Right. So as a player, it's like not really in your in your control. Oh, totally. Control. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, you're at the mercy of the you're at the mercy of the entire situation. You don't yeah. know who you're getting drafted by. You don't know. Like, think about even scenarios where, like, who, who's playing ahead of you? You know what I mean? Like, just happens to be on that team or a trade happens. And, yeah. like, all of a sudden, like, I'm sure you can attest to this. Just, like, all of a sudden they insert this other guy where that was, like, not real, you know, like. It's, like, it's all about luck sometimes. It bro. really is. It really is. And it's about, like, we talk about it all the time. Just, like, trust. You, gotta, you can't control it. So you just got to trust it. Be the best you can during it. You know Worry what about mean? yourself, bro. Obviously, you want to be a good teammate and shit. But, like, just mm-hmm. do your thing. Ball out. And if. You, you ball out, someone's going to let you play, you know? So I, I think it's just worry about being so, a good teammate, focus on your shit. And 100%. 100%. I mean, you're a testament to it. Before we move past you being a fucking Yankee, is, you got to tell us what being a Yankee is like. Not, not, not talking about the field. Just, you know, living in New York, yeah. the city. It's an incredible... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to say this in the most humble way. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, it's like being a celebrity. Yeah. Sick as fuck, I think. Like... Get recognized, bro. I'm a bench player, bro. But like, you know what I mean? Like, that, right. I think that shit's sick. Like you get treated to five star hotels, whatever it may be. You get the best of the best. And so, like, kind of what we're going to saying about like you going to bad stadiums to go play with a bad fan base, um, it's kind of like the same thing. Like, you just don't get that love, bro. And right. I love feeling the love there, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, kind of like what John was saying. Like, they might they might boo you, they might talk shit to you, but it's like when you're doing your thing, bro, and you're winning. Like, mm-hmm. New mm-hmm. York's the best city in the world, dude. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't do it any other way. And I. I don't know. I do. This is my fifth year with them, and like I don't know how much longer. Like I, you know, but right. I want to win a fucking ring there, bro. Because I feel like winning in New York, especially. I don't. When's the last championship? Oh nine. It's t- yeah. It it's, like been, it's been it's been a time. minute, bro. So I feel like that city is just ready to erupt. They will erupt. Oh, bro. So I just hope my time there, we end in a ring because we've been so close, so many years, you know. And like yeah. that shit's hard, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, yes. So the fact that like, the Yankees were doing that shit on the regular, like, yo. Or yeah. like, Red Sox had like two or three since then. Just, just throwing that out there. <laughs> <laughs> you met this guy? Fuck this guy. Met- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the fact that your, your fucking password's Yankee Suck 69. <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. It's the most Boston thing that of all time. exists. Yeah. <laughs> In the stratosphere, the Boston. fact that the 69 is there, it's just... Cherry on top, bro. It's just so... Hey, they're a good team, though, bro. No bullshit. They are. They are a good team. Yeah, they got some young talent. That dude, dude. Kike is kind of having a coming out. He's balling. Sheesh. He's balling. Dude, he's nasty. Mm. What um in regards to the league and the dynamic of the league, you have a bunch of friends in the obviously. Yeah, it's just, a small community, bro. Yeah. 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 And I think I think it's cool just to hear different point of views and you can learn shit from guys. You know, I Absolutely. love surrounding myself with guys like that. It's really like, good that you do that though. It's really good that you you understand the importance of that. Yeah, I think most guys like, don't. They have the ego. You, know, you just like, got to listen. Like Marcus, bro. Like a lot of people. Like he, you know, you got to listen to what this dude's saying. He's a smart dude. Mm-hmm. He knows he's just not talking just to like exactly. bullshit you. You know what I mean? Exactly. Like, yeah, I wish I wish more people. And I, and I wish I, more people understood that about him. And I feel a hundred percent. And I feel like a lot of people. And I'm not just saying it's just Marcus, but I think people. Yeah. When when they're trying to like speak and they're like, oh, he's running his mouth. It's like, bro, this guy's just trying to spread his knowledge. Bro. Yeah. You know try, what I mean? And he's just trying. To, it's his truth. You know what I mean? Like he. You create a platform. It's not about bowing to the fucking the man and like no. doing 
cookie cut. Like he, he wants to just like be himself, you know. But I, mean? I I think that's good for the trend of baseball, it bro. Is. Like when you got Marcus doing his thing, you got Fernando Tatis doing his thing, Juan Soto, whatever. All this young energy, bro. Acuna, bro. Like yeah, it really is. It feels it feels like I think maybe you would agree with this. It's just like feels like baseball was kind of had a, like a uh oh like is it kind of falling in relevance because it used to be prime time. America's sport, all ball, the, time, the ball bro. game. Baseball tonight, all yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah. You know like, I mean? and, and you wonder that, but it kind of feels, I would say, I would argue, yes, that it was declining, but and the stats would agree. But I want to say this year and just like the feeling around baseball, like... There's a buzz, There bro. was like a, a total reversal, and it kind of feels like it's got this new fresh energy about Yeah, bro. It. Well, I think... I think well, the, the London thing that we did playing the Red Sox, mm. just being universal, dude. The, the Iowa game that we did, yeah. this, that shit was nuts, bro. I, I think a huge factor of this, that was fire. That I, was sick. I think a huge factor of this is just like the visibility to the younger generation. Because yeah. think about it. Most kids, like, what's TV to them? It's their phone. Yeah. They're, they're, yeah. Getting, they're scrolling TikTok. They're not watching fucking program TV. No. Nah. You know, and then obviously it's gone to streaming, you know. But like, man, you got to think about how it's evolving. Mm -hmm. I also think it's marketing too. I feel like there was no, there was, it was almost there was like this stigma around baseball where like you can't be yourself. You have to fall in line. This is yeah. the mold. Like whatever org is, you know what I mean? 100%. And I feel like now, kind of like that new wave that's coming in and bringing like a fresh face and a fresh vibe to baseball, like throw that shit up in the air. If, you, you know, if it's a big homer, throw yeah. that shit up to the moon, bro. 100%. You know what I mean? Because like, 100%. If this guy strikes me out in a big situation, he wants to scream, skip. It's like, all right, well, like you won, bro. It's competitive because the next time I'm going to get you, you know? Like, mm -hmm. I, I don't even under, like, I understand. There, so there, I understand protecting the integrity of it, but it's also just like as a business, right? Like think about, yeah. think about like UFC, like who's the, who's the biggest motherfucking seller? The most confrontational, loud mouth, mm -hmm. non-traditional, fucking say exactly what I want to say, fuck you. Jake Paul, Conor McGregor, exactly. all these dudes, bro. Those, not to say like we need a bunch of those guys, no. but like there, you need those guys. And if you minimalize your, your personalities and you put a ceiling on their personalities, like who's to say how much revenue you're bringing away from the sport? Yeah. Because there's a lack of a connect, like there's like a lack of a connectivity with the people. People, people want to, people want to see that racy shit. It gets you, gets you fucking. Fired what I up. think, what I think the NBA does and the the NFL does really well, and I wish we did it more. Was like the whole cleat and shoe thing. Like, yeah. when you go to an NBA game, you're like, oh, let me see what shoe LeBron's wearing today. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, oh, maybe I can go buy those at a store. But it's like, okay, well, I play for the Yankees, and it's like, okay, if I want to do a Statue of Liberty color cleat with seafoam green, that's part of the city's colors, you know. But like, I can't wear that. It's so but it's whack. like, could you imagine if? If Marcus or you wanted to do like a, or whoever made Fernando Tostis with the with the with the pink, bro, like mm -hmm. all these kids are wearing pink cleats now and pink arm bands. Like mm -hmm. that's good for the game, bro. Hundred like, percent. So I wish that was more normalized throughout the game because I, I think, think it's I think it's headed there though. But there's yeah. like rules against like they'll you get fined for that shit. It's like I'm not trying to do anything malicious here. I'm just trying to yeah, I wonder, be me. I wonder know? how long it sticks. I don't I, know. Our, I know. Well, our, our CBA's up. Ooh, okay. So yeah, for, <laughs> explain that a little bit for the people listening. Um, well, like the, the collective the bargaining. Collective bargaining thing. Yeah. Well, there's just basically the rules, you know, the right. guidelines of everything, and you're just negotiating new stuff. But when you but say it's up, what does that what does that mean? Um, just time for a renewal of a contract. There's basically there's either going to be a lockout or so there would be a new new set of circumstances, rules. Yeah, exactly. So there, I know without getting too into it, like there are there's people asking for expanded playoffs or whatever it may be. Right. Um, and so it's just whatever we want to give and whatever they want to give, but and it's like a, a bartering, you know, like lawyers, a, but, you know, yeah, negotiation, but, yeah, interesting, yeah, interesting timing. It'll be, oh yeah, it'll be a really interesting, um, especially after the COVID year. Yeah. So absolutely, we'll see, bro. Absolutely. Um, before we go, I want to fucking what was the night we met? I just was thinking this. I was Me and just you saying that we met. You came to my show. Yeah, right? Tampa, right? Had but a blast. I feel like, did I meet you before then though, or not? Nah? I don't think so. I was, as you were just telling me that story, I was like, when did we meet? I, I, I want to say it was... Tampa, right? In 2019? I want to say you came with Marcus and Clint. Yep. Yep. So Marcus and Clint, we were filming a TV show at the time, right? Well, was this 2016 or was it 2018? I think it was 18. It was 18. Yeah, it was 18. Yeah, 18 Damn. was not the TV show. Not that, the TV show. This was the last time we were in Tampa. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Yep. And Clint was there. We, we took a picture backstage. We, yeah, it's everywhere. Yeah, it is. <clears throat> yeah, it was a good, good little moment. We yeah, had a, it was a great, great moment. time, though. I had Dude. an awesome time. I think the whole, the whole town <laughs> had an awesome time. Dude, that was a great time. You know, what are, I don't know. I don't know where y'all went. I just remember 
<laughs> that was my first time for one of your shows, bro. Well, so that like, was like give, give us your experience from your from your well, we, You brought us on stage, bro, so that was a, a unique experience. But yeah. uh, So thanks for that. Of but course. Y'all, your friends are rowdy, bro. Oh, yeah. They love that shit, bro. Oh, like, yeah. I don't know. Uh, and, that, and those are like, Florida's like the smallest probably area for us. Yeah, that was the, one of our smaller shows. But, that, but that's even yeah. better. Like, you I got gotta, to see, that was like the original vibe. You yeah, know what I mean? I, yeah, yeah, dude, I thought it was sick. Uh, yeah, did you hit bars with us after? Did that happen? We went for one bar and then it got kind of wild. And then we we're like, we were in right. Ebor, which is an interesting neighborhood. We, we, were, had, we had Spring Trick. Yeah, very interesting. Where very we in interesting Ebor? neighborhood. We were in Ebor. <laughs> yeah, that's where the venue was. I don't remember. Was Josie there too? I don't remember. I I had a I had a remember, wild uh, night. Uh, I don't think she was. <laughs> no, I'm trying to think. Why I can't really put my finger on that night. I got got wild though. Got out of yeah, here. Yeah, it, was, yeah, it yeah. normally does. No, it was I, a good time. I met a girl that had a Tom Brady tattoo on her ass. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you yes. can't make that shit she, up. TB twelve. She had TB twelve right on her ass. Talk about an, an aphrodisiac. And it kind of like. <laughs> I'm not, fans, I'm not even a Brady. Right? I'm not even a Brady guy like that. Like she I wasn't even Tom. attractive. I was like, I need you. You know, <laughs> for real. I love. Like I obviously love and respect Tom Brady. He's the goat. Legendary. But bro. but it actually turned me on a little bit more that she had the TV12. I was like, I don't know what it was. It made her se- it made her sexier. You appreciate it made her greatness. sexier. Yeah. I don't know so then I was like, how much do I like Tom? You know, what I, mean? I don't know. It, it elevated whatever was going on there. Was, yeah. I don't know. I guess I am a Tom guy. With this girl thinking about this guy. <laughs> you know, I don't know. Big Tom guy. I don't know what that says about me. <laughs> Mike, I don't know if you remember this. That wasn't even the weirdest thing that night. Giselle, but we get it. There were, there yeah. were, there were, now you, you like just have the whitest fans ever usually. <laughs> you know, like it's, we, didn't, we didn't draw it up that way. That's just how it is. You yeah, know yeah, I mean? yeah. So there was like, there was two black girls there at the show. And they had like, oh my god! One was like Meg this. the Stallion. One looked like Meg the Stallion. Yeah. And then like she had a friend, and like not your typical Mike Stud fans. Yeah. And they were like all about fucking chilling with me after the show. You, they loved. They the loved them from John Kilmer. They, I remember this. They kidnapped me after the show. They're like, "You're coming with us," and they fucking <laughs> showed me a night in Ebor that I'll never forget. Never. Forget. Where did you go? What we went to like seven or eight different bars. I forgot. I, I found out that these girls work in like the nightlife industry, so like yeah. they're legends everywhere they go. Mm-hmm. They're like everyone just like was like walked right in. Everyone was like excited when they showed up and we got free drinks and they just showed me an incredible it's good night. energy. Yeah, good energy. Do to you be still around. talk to these two women? Uh, yeah, I subscribe to one of their OnlyFans <laughs> just uh, to show support. <laughs> Yeah, I just said, yeah. Her. Actually, I, I love that you tap in I, with her. I, I don't even find her attractive. I just dish her out to ten dollars a month. <laughs> hey, you know what it is? It's just you got to give it. She to showed get me it. a good time. She, she, you know, she gave, you gave me a good time. Yeah. You got. You did have an extremely good time that night. <laughs> I, I want to say I might have walked in on that. <laughs> My bad. The tour bus is of tight quarters. Um, how was that, bro? Oh man, I don't know how you Fuck, do that. It's like I almost feel like it, you never hear anyone, someone explain like what DMT is like, and they're like, I don't have the words. Like it, it doesn't. It, that's extreme. But like until you live on a tour bus, you you guys can relate. You have that at least a little bit of that bus traveling. Yeah, aspect. yeah, terrible. That's but why the I'm asking. Tour bus is like think about it with zero rules, complete ratchetry. Seven. How many guys? Eight to eight to ten guys. Eight to ten guys sleeping in bunks. In like, bunks. Yeah, bro. Stacked like Every starbies. night, like dude, you just like a one bathroom. You're like on the map. Like it's the magic carpet ride, bro. Like you cl- we party. Fucking party! I one play bathroom, the shows. One bathroom you can't take a shit in, by the way. On the bus, so you play the shows. You, you can't fucking poop go in. hit the bars, whatever. Party on the bus. A lot of times, like, like I'm, I'm econ- like the economics of touring is like, I'm independent, so we navigate them ourselves, and like mm-hmm. there's a certain way of like, so like a lot of times, we're leaving in the middle of the night. You know what I mean? So. I'm not getting hotels, so I'm just on the bus. I'm like in the wave the whole time. I just perform for two hours. You know what I mean? So it gets like, it gets incredibly challenging to even just like have your normal way about you because you just part and then and then you fucking pass out and then you wake up in the next city. It's like meet and greet, you know, an Turn hour it on now. again. It's the same thing. Yeah. You're just in a different city. And it's just a new group of people. You talk about like a simulation. You might as well be in the same city every day. You might as well. Yeah. It's just different people. That's you know, wild, and bro. And it's crazy, bro. It's like like the. You venue. feel like you lose your sanity or not? Nah? Well, that? no. I mean, I think I'm definitely I'm definitely lucky. After, I'm definitely, after a certain amount of time, like four or five weeks in, you start yeah, to kind of lose it. I, yeah. I would say tours, I would though. say it's incredibly easy to. I I'm lucky. I, I haven't had like I haven't really had that issue necessarily. Like I don't. It, but I I also would say it definitely puts a huge damper on like. 
You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't lose my sanity, but like, and I can see why people do. A lot of a lot of these fuckers do. They need drugs, you know? Yeah. They need they need escapes because it's just. And like, I feel like you're with a good group of dudes too. Exactly. Like I was just gonna say, I'm lucky. The, like the way it's been for me in, in my world, in my universe, because like I have the same guys. There's like these certain things that like give you that grounding. You know what I, I mean? I was just about to say, I just bro. feel grounded still. Like yes, I definitely take a take a hit from it. It's just like, all right, this is crazy. It's just crazy. It's like yeah, so I couldn't far imagine, from bro. real life. And then, you know. <laughs> this thing from real life, bro. It is. And then you see us, like, then we're just in, like, real life again. Like, oh. You know what I mean? And yeah. Not to say it's, like, completely normal. You know what I mean? But, but I mean, like, it is your I'm life. I'm still so, you fucking know? walking around with, hung, you know, like, walking around the neighborhood with no shirt, breathing exercise. Like, I'm having a regular life. You know what I mean? In the sense of, like, a lot of these guys can't even do that. They're stuck in that world 24 I couldn't seven. imagine, bro. I'll and that's where the shit. drugs and all the abuse comes from. Because, and the sadness. Because, you know, your human experience is a bit robbed from it. And, and it sounds crazy to say. Because you're like, what do you mean? You just flew from here, fucking there to there. Look at all the shit you've done. It's so crazy. It's not. Right? Like, life isn't like a fucking. It sounds crazy until you're doing it. It's not a picture book. Like, yeah. It's not like a, you know, it's not a competition or a race. Like, it's about enjoying and being in the moment and present. You know what I mean? It's like, a good way to put it, dude. And it's really hard for these guys to do it, these people to do it, because their actual normal human experience has been compromised. Like, they can't have normal, like, walking down the street, bumping into a stranger, that the synchronicity of life. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, the ex interesting things that you can't even really explain, you know, it gets like, a lot of those just kind of get taken away from you, those types of normal human experiences, you know? I feel you, dude. And, it, you know, you, you, you get a taste of that, I get a taste of it, for sure. And, you know, to be honest, like, is a lot of my decisions in business <laughs> have been kind of to stay away from getting there. Because, like, I don't think I would, I don't think we would bode well. I'd be fucking hung over at six in the morning. Like, Tour I life? wouldn't be a yeah. good A-list. I wouldn't be a good A-list celebrity. You know what I mean? I don't <laughs> yeah. want to be. Like, it's just like, I couldn't, I don't even think we could function at that level. Just like, low-key? Yeah, it's just got to be, like, the most it could be is, like, a C-list. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, the most. I'm climbing up to a C-list celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, like, that's probably where I would call it. You know, in yeah, regards 100%. to like making business, not to say you can cap it, it's out of your control a bit, but making business decisions. Like if I spend money, if I stop spending money on my, like to this day, I don't spend money marketing my music in regards to after the music's out, there's a whole game to be played in the music industry. It's like tons of money being spent, tons of hands being shaking. And in regards to fast tracking songs to the, the biggest platform, gotcha. you know what I mean? And just when you see songs all over the place, how does that happen? You know, like there's, it's actually the game. That's the, that's the industry that's happening on the back end. And you're just letting your shit go. We naturally. don't do that yeah, yeah. because it's it, there's a huge. It's just a high risk model, bro. Like, and it's also like the the commodity exchange is like, hey, we'll make you so famous that you'll be so fucking rich, but we're taking eighty five percent of the income. So that's how does that even happen? That's though? essentially a commodity exchange for because they these kids are broke. So they're like, we'll give you a million dollars. They don't know it's recoupable. So it's not a million dollars. It's a fucking loan with the worst bank loan fucking interest rates you could ever hear, you've ever seen. So these kids get fucked out of the gate. They buy mom something. They buy a chain. They buy a whip. Oh, They're I already in the fucking red. They don't have any understanding of taxes. There's no one at record labels helping these kids manage their money. They just think that shit's endless, dude. And it, it, just, it just happens, bro. Like, I can see it, man. It gets gobbled. It's, it's sad, though, honestly. But, like, there's also the Post Malones, the Taylor Swifts, where, like, the music's so good and, the right, and the, the right people get behind it. They spend the right money, make the right plays. It goes to the fucking moon. Those people make hundreds of millions of dollars, right? You know, but the other 95%, it really is, it's pretty dicey. It's a pretty, yeah, dude, it's I can't a very imagine risky being in that model. Industry. It's a very risky business model. So that was really where my first, like, ah, this just, like, feels like I'm setting myself up for a fucking implosion, where we took the long road on this and, you know, built it. We have an organic ass fan base, and you can enjoy. It, I feel like a little bit more. It's like this I is really the way can. I want to do it. Like really this is the can. way he wants to do it. It's like I don't have other people tell me what I think I need. It's like this is my art. Yeah, right. I don't know if I'm no, saying no, like, you're right. you know, right. like I want to make it this way. I wanted to sound this way, or I wanted to name it this way. Like couldn't have spot. Couldn't have been more spot on. I mean, I don't know how. I think we're, if you saw how run and gun we are, like everything's just in the moment and flow. Like, I, I don't, if you see my music videos, I'm not, it's just our lie. Like, yeah. not, I'm not doing anything. I'm not like, hey, let's get this, let's make a storyline. It's, it's just not how I see Put it. Put a camera around. It's like, these, the songs are literally my life in song form. So if Sick. I went to shot a real video, it's no longer my life. Yep. Like, so the music, like, I don't give up. You know what I mean? That's just where I see it. Like, 
That's where I see our whole brand. Respect that. That's dope, though. And that's not like a mainstream approach, obviously. Not at all, know? but... But it's more just about like the word of mouth. These The fans that I do have, they're just hyper-engaged. You know what I mean? So, but, bro, I feel like your word of mouth fan base is like the most... Like there's a, there's a yeah. lot of athletes, bro. Like, I Doing feel like, well. like when I... I feel like that's how that shit explodes. You get into a clubhouse, like yeah. that shit pops off. You know yeah, what I mean? Because yeah, yeah. like the baseball, the ba you guys, like especially... How old are you? 26. You're that age group? That, it, that your class of guys was like a big part because now all the younger class of baseball guys are all big fans, you know? Like Hell yeah. It's it, the baseball, really without baseball, I'm not sure if I would even be here because I think, you know, if you think about it, like I was, I had that All-American year. I was a good baseball player. There had never been a baseball player that rapped and it was like pretty good. Yeah. So like it gave it a niche thing where like the baseball guys were like, Substance, oh, this is our bro. guy. Yeah, This is bro. our guy, like, you know? So, like, it gave it this, like, home team thing where I actually could build while I was learning. I didn't know what I was doing, you know? But it, I don't know where it would be without, like, then from that translating to... It really pollinated my whole fan base. Because the baseball guys, who's the cool kids in high school? The athletes, you know? So the athletes, then they're telling... The, who's the pretty... Who, like, the pretty girls, at least where I'm from, they yeah. want to date the athletes. They hear it at the baseball party. They hear it, you know, hanging out oh, with Oh, who's their, this? Yeah, exactly. Then they want to come to the show. And then, so it's this whole butterfly effect really from baseball. And I, I don't know if I've ever really had that realization, but if you think about it, how, how unbelievably intertwined the two, like they feel like two separate lives. Just a, But it's not. But like uh, without this, this doesn't even happen, you know? Like, so it's, it's a crazy concept. Hell but, yeah. To think about it. Yeah. I never really thought about that. Oh, wow. Pretty sexy fan base. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we, we got a good, we got a good. We got a, Sounds like Ebor, yeah. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> we had a good we had a good run with the, you know I I mean you're still we're still balls we're still boots on the ground <laughs> we're still boots on the we ground have, we, hung, we haven't hung them up yet big foxhole guy like, <laughs> the guy you want in the foxhole yeah um, but yeah like I mean we had a fucking crazy run with the fans and just girls still shit. going bro oh yeah we're still going I'm just you know keep going <laughs> gotta keep going, you gotta keep going I gotta live I gotta live it I Got gotta it. live it <laughs> got it I gotta live it. Um, but man, I, where are we at on time? This has been like an actual an hour forty five. It's an amazing. And we're losing daylight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This has been an amazing conversation. Yeah, bro. Yeah. I appreciate you having me, dog. Because like, like we just to give you all perspective, like we you know we've been around each other a handful of times. We're always talking DMs, saying yeah. what's up and shit. You're in season, like I'm doing what I do. We've never really had a conversation or an opportunity to have a real conversation this first one. like this. Yeah, I ran into you at the restaurant. That's how this happened. Super random. Talk about the synchronicities, you know? If I'm too famous to go there alone, I'm at the bar alone, just fucking Sumamaya waiting for. Well, I was waiting for Cody. We we're closing the Chug Bud deal. Synchronicity. Synchronicity. Synchron. I'm not even gonna try. Synchronicities is like it's when. Is it synchronicity? The, could be. Maybe I don't, I don't know. know. Question for Google. <laughs> yeah, it's not a fucking. Uh, <laughs> English class, John. <laughs> no, it's the name of a Sting album. Sir, that's wrong. <laughs> yeah, so <it> synchron <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I saw you there, and that's how this happened. Um, well, you were with like some basketball dudes, right? I was with my, with my yeah, Javiel McGee, Javiel McGee, mm -hmm. and but it was my financial advisor. That's who I was with, and we had, we share the same cool guy. But yeah, super super small world. And he's Love my that. neighbor, Love which that. is even weirder. Yeah. Was driving by, I was like, well, he was behind me and it was late at night. I was like, why is this guy following? I didn't know who it was. Yeah. I was like, why is this guy following me? You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I kind of live in the middle of nowhere. Right. And then literally, I see him pull in and I'm like, that's three houses down from me. Well, all right. Crazy. Crazy. That's Sees me trying to shoot my jump shot. I didn't even know that. Had no idea. You can see my basketball cool hoop. Yeah, chill. Yeah. Normal ass dude, bro. Mm. Love that. I feel like all athletes are, bro. You know what I mean? Or like, whatever it may be, like, some, it's, at least the ones I fucking know. I don't know. I mean, but like what you you're, know? What I mean? You're an athlete. You, you know, you're around. Tons but you've of, you've met celebrities and stuff. Oh, like, yeah. you're just a normal ass dude, bro. Yeah, like, you know what I mean. Hundred percent. I think I think it'd be surprising for people at home, like who never, if you just kind of saw what the was on the internet about them, and like, well, that, yeah, and then that fantasy when you listen to the music or whatever, you know, like even the guys you think are kind of tapped or off the rocker. Like I know a lot of people think post is like. You know, Post goes through so much emotionally because he's just got so many people and so much energy around yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. But he's such a normal dude, bro. Like, four or five days in a row, like, we just crashed at the crib. We just played beer pong every day. That's Hang all out. we did. Yeah. And then we made some music. And then, like, he would wait. The only time, like, we slept a few different times. Like, he's, a, he's one of those guys that goes. And just not, he's not doing drugs. He's just fucking pounding Bud Lights. And it's That's like sick, the most though. incredible thing you've ever seen. It's, it's the marathon, like... 
he's like the number one marathon runner in the world in regards to just just, <laughs> just committed shit. to the Bud Light. And you the camels. I mean? He'll get, he'll get the camel on crashes. the waves. Yeah, and the camelbacks. He'll get, <laughs> the on, camelbacks. He'll get on a wa- certain waves where he'll, he'll do, you know, he'll drink like liquor. I'm not saying it's only beer, but when he's in that beer phase, and like after him. I have four beers, three, four, I'm out. Like I'm going to liquor. Or, yeah. You know, um, that was heavy, bro. Oh, he's so fucking committed. Like there's no, there's no, <laughs> if, there's no if, ands, or buts about it. I got mm-hmm. talented, bro. Oh, yeah. Holy shit. I mean, I, I had the opportunity of being in, around him before he even, it was right. I think it was he had one song out, White Iverson, and um, just being in the circles I was in LA, I already I already had heard about him, and then I heard that that song, I was like I I, I loved it, and then when I got around him, I, you were like this I guy's like, the dude, oh, he's the shit, he's the realest realest motherfucker, he'll play any, he'll play fucking, there could be there could be twenty, I don't want to say too much about, it. there could be people around, he does not give up, he's in it like talk about just like not caring what anyone thinks about you. Love it. And just like being in, in the music. Like you get around them and you know right away like it's authentic and it's real versus like maybe you get around some, other, to hear some other celebrities yeah, or bro. A-list artists and you won't necessarily get that vibe. I've been around a ton of them, you know. It's not, you don't get that same vibe. Some of them you do. There's a lot of talented people in the world, clearly, you know, yeah. obviously. But he's one of those like special. It's like a spe- that, and that's why it's been so... Hundred percent. Fucking trend, just essential. Nonstop, any, dude. Any any song he's on, I'm like, damn, that shit bangs. Yeah, any chill, any any chills, bro. Like he's not out there like hustling and busting. He goes and fucking, he goes and lives his life. Like yeah, he needs his peace, you know. He lives out in the middle of nowhere, and it's like it's I, I it's one of the things I admired about him. He moved as soon as he got popular. He dipped out of L. A. Oh, really? Right away. And like most people, like soak that in. Yeah, you know like, what I mean. Like, it's from a small get, town too. You right? get the house. Yeah. yeah, you get the fucking house at the top of the hill. You're the like. Think about what Post could be doing in L.A. Like, mm-hmm. I couldn't imagine. And he was, you know, he'll pop in and do it. He'll ball out. Like, you know what I mean? That's the way to go, though. I feel like that's why I like about being here. It's like, oh, if you miss it, it's like, all right, forty-five minute flight. Yeah. Five hour drive. Yeah, like, you can go do that. Pop in for a weekend. How far out from L.A. were you? Like in Marietta. Two hours. Two hours. Depending on, you know, you never know with traffic. Could be right. three, you know what I mean? Yeah. But it's really not, 90 miles. Yeah. Not too bad. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was one of the things I admired about him and then where it went, where it went for him. I mean, every, every single thing, like he just took a year break. He's still, right when he comes back, let's just be, he's got that, like he's already built that superstardom. It's crazy to see. I saw it. We pretty much saw it from the jump. Like sick to, we that, watched it, watched every step of it, really. That's dope. Yeah, it's crazy. And I'm just a great dude. Back to your original point. It's just like, bro. Makes things that much better. So too. Normal, it's a good, such a normal guy when you're around him. Like, it's just, it's just his life is so abnormal now that it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's harder for him to, he's got to like just kind of be secluded for him to be. But that's just being grounded though. That'd be for him being just like, I'm going to get away from everybody to feel normal. Exactly. Bro. The awareness. I thought, I remember being in LA at the time and watching him dip. He dipped and I was just like, I mean, I don't even, I never really even thought about it, but maybe, maybe he influenced it because he was so willing. You yeah, Because, like, I, I, you know, when us leaving LA has been like an amazing thing for us. And I kind of was like milling over the idea for a while and like fearful of it's doing scary, it. It's scary, bro. It's home. Yeah. You know, like it almost feels like home. It's like I'm leaving what's comfortable and yeah. getting away from not being comfortable. Right. And, and this, that, and also just like the facade of like, it's all an illusion, but like, I'm a musician. Yeah. Like, you make it to LA, that's where you, that's where you want to be. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. You know, that's where you fucking live. That's what you do. You know what I mean? So we're there and you're there for six, seven years and you go, it's just like, what, am I entering a new phase of my life? Like, you know what I mean? But because of the way I create and the way we do these pods, like, Don't matter. it's just like three guys in a room with three cameras. You know what I mean? Chilling. No one else. There's nothing else going on. We can you know? be Montana right now. Uh-huh. No one knows. That's what I've been doing. So we spent time in Montana. Oh, Really? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Threw out a random ass state. <laughs> no, seriously, straight up. So we did. We moved from LA when COVID happened a little over a year ago. Yep. Came to Scottsdale, loved it. Did the Ball Don't Lie podcast with Johnny. Um, from there, we were partying our balls off. We're like, we need seclusion. We go to Montana, get a hundred acre ranch in Montana. Oh, it was damn. insane. We, I like. How many times did we see people? We had to drive an hour to like go to a town and see damn. people. We just were on the ranch, and I was just cooking up. You know what I mean? Chilling. From there, we went to Tampa. Tampa. Mm-hmm. Um, stayed in Marcus Stroman's crib. Tyler Glass now was just the, right down, the sh- like four or five houses down. So that's how we ended up getting Got you. up. Um, ran into Clint in Tampa, too. <laughs> that's when we did that podcast. Yep. We were down there when spring training was going on. Oh, got you. Yeah. yeah. And then from there, Nashville. Nashville. 
went banana land there. You ain't talking about being a nomad, huh? All yeah, no, we're really. Place. That's why. That's why I'm actually going through it. Then from there we went, came back. Austin. Here. Oh, Austin, Texas. Hey, how was that place, by the way? Because everyone's going there. I really like. I really like it. I wouldn't move there though. We were out of the city. We were by Lake Travis, like forty minutes out from oh, the city, so it. we didn't get the full like immersive experience. I mean, no. I, I, so, so let me say this. Yes, that, that's exactly right. That's where I would live if I was in Austin. I would live on the water. There is Lake Austin that might be ideal, but I'm not mad at being 30, 40 minutes out because I don't really want to be. I, I'm more. Of, I need like. A, I need some, like that's peace for me. It's, yeah, bro. How quiet it is. When there's tons of people around, just it's not like for me. You know what I mean? On a long term thing. Yeah. Um. So I would live there, but we we didn't make any effort. Like we went in like three times, got blacked out, fucking had a great time. But like yeah. it's not like we saw. We didn't like really catch the Austin vibe. We didn't go in there to eat a ton, you know. So yep. we were on like kind of a recluse vibe. I just dropped the album, so we were just kind of like on that wave, you know, pool, fucking talking to people, doing, Hell yeah. you know, enjoying um, life. Yeah. So like I I say all that to say like we I don't think I can even get a gauge on if I would do if I would stay there. So maybe that was wrong for me to say. I, I need to I need to do another few experience months there it and a really bit more. experience yeah. it. Um, but I, I would, I definitely think there's, there's similarities to Nashville and for whatever reason, I think maybe it's, it's, it's biased because the music industry and I have a lot of friends there in that space, but like, it just feels like a better version. It's kind of the similar vibe. Um, and that might be controversial to say, I don't know. I think it's, it's all, it's all opinion on what's better for, for me, the way I feel in Nash it, Nashville just has this crazy energy about it. Where like in Austin, I draw a lot of similarities and if I'm choosing, I'm choosing Nashville for me personally. Yeah. But I'm also a fucking musician, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. um, finished the album there in, uh, in Nashville and then went to Austin and then we're back here. So goes to show you, this is the first place that we came back to. You're going to buy a place or no? I might. Here? I, I just want to get into real estate, man. I'm, I have some things hey. that I'm, I'm getting ready to do and I want to have like my next play with liquid cash is to, because I, I like doing like private investment stuff I've been doing, especially being in LA, that was a good asset. Like there was a lot of, startups young dudes doing cool shit like i got in on a weed flower grow yep. really early that paid off you know that type of shit next like i would love to i would really love to do real estate hell yeah bro. Listen, i know a lot of that never do yeah bro my brother is in real estate my cousin in real estate and i've, mm -hmm. I've always wanted to do something along yeah. the lines with that whether just to buy a house wherever it may be and just like not even step foot in it but yeah. just make it nice remodel it and just that's just constant income bro. right in the mm -hmm. in the right areas for yeah, sure exactly um and then there's like a, there's a huge space i, I just don't there's a huge space for like, we've talked about this before, just like the apartment rental complexes. Like, like buy, yeah, bro. Dude, there's, there's some dudes who are killing it. Especially, I just don't know enough about it yet to yeah. even have an opinion on that, but I've heard. There's real guys you can just get with and they'll kind of do it for you. You just use your capital. You I'm all know? in on that. Might have to plug you with these dudes. They're Nashville based too, but like in Nashville, they're building these tall and skinnies. So the first place I'm going to do, like you asked me about buying a house here, I would probably say first Nashville, I would buy either a house to live in for us, or at least I want to get, I want to get like these dudes get these lots, and you can put, they're tall and skinny buildings. You can put fucking eight buildings in where you would put one house. Oh what? Yeah, like three bedroom, you know, nice. Like we went and stayed in one the first time. I didn't realize it was, it was a little small for us, but like just the amount of guys we had, but it was fucking nice. Mm -hmm. It was nice, and there. There's endless amounts of things you can do, dude. That's and a place thing. like that, dude. They're talking about twenty-five to thirty thousand people a day are moving there. <laughs> it's being built out incredibly fast. So it's, it feels like that's kind of like why the tall and skinnies are such a thing is because yep. they can pack people in. Mm -hmm. But it's crazy, bro. Nashville in five years is going to look a lot different. Major city, it's going to be a major city. It's going to look a lot different. I want to know if there's going to be a sports team that goes there. That's my, in the next five to ten years. You think there will be? I'm, I want to know if. Yeah. It's interesting. Well, they already have football and they have hockey. Yeah, they got the Tennessee Titans right there. I mean, I meant like baseball, like a baseball, yeah, baseball like team. Like a baseball team. And they have like a triple A team nearby. Yeah. yeah, yeah but yeah, yeah, no, it feels like a baseball town. People would look out well, The MLB's talking about expanding. So I heard that was one of the cities and I've heard nothing but oh, great, great things. It'd be great. Mm -hmm. It would just bring more commerce. The place is going to go to the fucking moon. It's just going to be totally different. Now you wonder what it does to like the fucking, there's such a, there's such a tradition there with the country music that like, you know what I mean? Like, it's going to fucking transform the city pretty it's gonna much. It's going to get watered oh, yeah, down. Dude. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's going to transform the city. You hope the vibe doesn't get lost too much. But you can do that. You can trans. I'm all for fucking growing, you know? Always. Um, but, yeah, I, I would be shocked if they didn't put a baseball team there. Be interesting to see. You just never know. Never I think that's know. where we end. <laughs> 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 so, uh, but, dude, really fucking amazing conversation. Dude, that was great, bro.
Thank you, sir. Appreciate you, homie. Appreciate you, that was good yeah, shit. it was great. And we, uh, this guy's obviously a Steve. He came to his show and experienced it firsthand. So all our, I don't give a fuck if you're a Yankees fan or not. You're now a Tyler Wade fan. You gotta go, give Appreciate it up for both the guy. Give it up for the guy. Thanks for the first podcast experience too. That was fire. Both you're good at it. That was fucking sick. You're good at it. All right, we're out of here. I told him you never know.